I'm starting this stream <coughs> choking on coke. Oh God, please don't take that out of context. I tried to have, no, it wasn't coke, it was Pepsi. Oh, my fizzy drink, I've choked on it. <coughs> okay. Hello. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Woo woo! Oh, we've got Ainsy in the chat. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing? Hello. Let's have a little mini catch up before we get busy. Welcome, 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 welcome to the stream. How are we all doing? Um, today's stream. Hello, welcome, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, hi, my name's Lexi. Um, and I love chatting shit. And today we're going to be chatting a lot of. I wouldn't say shit, but we're be, we're gonna be chatting. We're gonna be chatting. Um, I have some. I I actually heckin' love carpet cleaning ASMR. Like actually no, as in genuinely. Don't let me at the function. I will play carpet cleaning ASMR. It's getting dangerous. Wes, thank you for the three months gifted to AMZ, and thank you as well for the. What was it? Was that your for your twenty seven months? Thank you so much. I am just gonna turn off the alert box for this um for this stream today, just because we're gonna be talking about some stuff, and I don't really wanna want to like get distracted you like in this this smooth jazz that was going on i didn't know what to put on but i hope we are all doing good i always like to ask how are we all feeling on a scale of one to ten all that good stuff today um i'm gonna start today's stream for the trigger warning i've been thinking so much about how to do this stream how i'm gonna go about it how all kinds of things are gonna are gonna be going on um seven ten seven i'm good like i'm glad okay i'd say a solid like one to four is not doing too brill five is like middle of the pack anything above a six i am very happy and that like for you that, that that's like that's like good i have not spoken to anyone today and now i'm on stream about to talk about serious stuff and it's kind of chipping me out um five because you're sick please feel better soon a two doing so shitty right now but you'll be okay yes you will i'm proud of every single one of you guys every single one of you any whatever number you are from one to ten even if you're a negative number then did she spoke to you i did but i think the voice note i sent you wasn't <laughs> quite the vibe i'm going for Oh, I miss stuff! Oh my god, I, I miss you. I miss you. Re reorganizing your book board. Oh my god, I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of every single one of you. Hi, Sin. So, okay. Today, uh, my music's muted. I, I, every time I mute my music, I get scared it's going to start playing something really silly uh, when I'm about to start talking about something serious. One time on this stream, I uh, started talking about, you know, like believing in yourself and like during exam energy, really looking after yourself. And the entire time God's Plan by Drake was playing and I didn't realize. Um, so that was that was something. So if at any point the music starts not fitting what we're talking about, please do say. <laughs> I would turn it off, but I know that I <laughs> sometimes I do. I need I need some music on. Um so but it, it was God's plan. That is what they say. Okay, so I'm gonna start off today's uh stream <laughs> just with a quick trigger warning. Um, we're going to be touching on some stuff today. Um, the biggest one is going to be trigger warning abuse. Um, I want all of you guys to be looking after yourselves during this stream um, and just really putting yourself forward, put yourself forward, putting yourself first and really just um, being kind to yourself. And if you really do feel like anything we talk about or start touching on gets something that you, you don't want to hear about, it is so fine to step away. It's so fine to go off. I'd really much rather you put yourself first. I'm gonna be talking with a very special guest. <laughs> um, there were a few people that were gonna be in this call, but then, you know, some stuff came up, some people were ill. So, um, absolutely fine. Um, okay, give me two seconds. But I'm doing good. Thank you guys. I'm very nervous about this stream today. I'm kind of nervous about what I'm gonna say and how I'm gonna go about things. I have a lot of thoughts in my head. And I don't know how many of them are, you know, um, articulated enough um to to talk about but we got a special guest today that i will call shortly um but until then i just want to talk about some stuff because twitter has been twitter's been a big to put it politely shitstorm recently um i've been seeing a lot of stuff um about you know people who have been um brave enough to share their stories and to come forward with things and i have been as somebody who shared their experience online have um just seen a lot of things and a lot of attitudes towards people coming out with stories about abuse both inside and outside of the content creator space oh fuck my ads 
My ads are so twisted at the moment. I'm so sorry. I've tried to turn them off, but for some reason it doesn't update, which is so annoying. Um, okay, Harry, I see your message. We're kind of talking about something important. So <laughs> no need to spell my message. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to get my notes up and get them up on my phone because I don't even know where to start. Should I start with, with calling the person? Okay. I'm gonna start with calling the person. We're just gonna go straight into it. Okay, give me a second. Where are my messages? A special guest. Actually, I've got a message him there ready. Are you ready, question mark? So I'm gonna stay, I'm, I'm sorry if I stutter a bit or if I seem a little bit all over the place. I haven't really, okay, let's just go. I'm gonna call a special guest. <laughs> Hello. Oh my god, is that the love of my life? Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm even better now I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little secret. I was <laughs> I've got a special a guest. Person. A mysterious, enigmatic figure in the distance. I would like everybody in the chat like to say hello to Miss Shobby Shovel. So <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? It's been a long time since I've seen you around here, <laughs> around, these, around these bars. You were, you know, you're I've been doing good actually. I'm okay. <laughs> yes, you freaking have. Yes, you freaking have. I'm so proud of you. Okay, let's just cut straight to the chase and try. And do... I don't know how to talk about this. You know when you like, when you're supposed to have like a serious talk, and you're like, well, um, weather is so good today, guys. <laughs> So I do want to say at the very least, because I know you already touched on the what's going on on Twitter. I have to at least acknowledge that I never could have imagined the amount of overwhelming support. I, I really didn't think it'd be as big as it ended up being at all. I don't know how I thought that, but you deserve it's the least you deserve. It is like so like it's so nice to see because I think a big a big fear of like coming forward with a story is the fear of like not being believed and we'll touch on that a little bit later because like i wrote down a mm -hmm. big list of reasons as to why people are hesitant to come forward with stories and why people mm -hmm. are like scared of it and such a big part of it is just generally not being believed <laughs> like yeah can i say one quick thing oh my god um, you want. in everything that we're discussing today i am not delving into the specifics of who i was talking about recently but i am here one as a victim um Actually, of multiple people. Like, this is not the yeah. first time that I have been wronged before. So I am here again to share my experiences, um, not just about one person, but no, also in support of you, every person that I know who has also been treated in ways that, like, we understand now and have experienced. Yes. It's so upsetting. This is not an expose by any means. I don't want people come in here being like, oh my God, there's no. going to be tea. I have a few hard hitting facts, don't get me wrong. And like, I, I dare I say, I'm just going to say, it will be biting my tongue. But um, yeah, I've, I've, I've written down a few points because do you know what is like, <sighs> things that we went through, I didn't realize how prevalent going through levels of abuse was. Mm, like mm -hmm. for so long like, like when it stages. happened yeah it didn't even i didn't even realize it was something that happened to me for months and months and months after it took me therapy and yeah. people were, like shaking me and yelling at me literally that's the point i was at too it was almost a full year later um that i would even acknowledge it as being abuse right and i feel like people love to use that as an excuse to be like oh you weren't like this a few months ago and it's like well oh. i didn't know hello you know what pisses me off is when people are like why'd you wait so long why'd you wait so it takes that long to even because you love these people so so yes. much yes and they take advantage and they the way that your brain <sighs> chemistry works like everything is so warped it genuinely you to get out and be able to think clearly takes so much time and then once you have you then have to rewrite everything you've ever thought about that person and go okay hey yeah. every time there was rose tinted glasses every single freaking time none of that was actually right a lot of that was more me than it was them as in the love came from your like your the way you saw it rather than what it actually was like it's crazy and it's sad because yeah. it's a realization you do have to come to your, yourself and then you feel like a bad person for beginning to you feel like you're villainizing them and it's like no you're not you're just seeing them for what they are yeah because you'll second guess yourself and it's not like we're uh 
unfamiliar with gaslighting either. Ah! And then every time you really do think, hey, I could never get gaslit again. I'm, I'm the pro at this. Really? That's the problem. That's what I'm pissed off at myself the most for because this does keep happening to me. <laughs> but I am, I am incredibly naive and trusting and... I try to come in with this wall up, but if a person gets a little crack in it, the whole thing comes tumbling down. I'm the exact same, which is sad, but like, I refuse to like <laughs> believe. And I always say, this, I was like, I refuse to let like how one person treated me affect how I love for the rest of my life. So in a way, mm -hmm. I guess I, I, I guess I'd always rather be overly trusting and then proven wrong than to let the actions of somebody else change the way yeah. I am forever. Yeah, I never want to believe that because I we blame ourselves enough already. Like we we know where we went wrong and and all the things that we could have done different to get ourselves out of the situation <sighs> sooner. But one, it is not our fault. <laughs> no, ever, never, never, never. But I always say, never, ever, ever. Trying to bring awareness to stuff like this, particularly so like for my, for my specific like um, story within the content creator space, I I literally always use the example of trying to stop stuff like this in the content creator space is like trying to stop pedophiles in Hollywood. Which might sound like a mad oh. statement to make, but it's that sense of no, 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 no. It, it's fe it, it, it feels like because it is, it is so big, and it's so prevalent. And it's people. It's about people protecting these people who are doing these heinous things. Like truly, I have heard of some vile behavior from people. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> but sometimes it did feel like, and for a long time, I think a lot of us kept our stories back because it was like, what difference can I make? If, I, if I'm if i one story, two stories, three stories out of like all of the people that are keeping it hidden and part of the reasons why it isn't normal to to be open about it, then how am I supposed to change that? It's like changing an yeah. age old system. But- um, And it I makes- it makes me feel like we're we're doing something wrong by speaking up. Like we're rocking the boat and there was peace before we said anything, <sighs> but- what about our peace? What about our Exactly. And for a long time, I can't explain to you how long I fe felt thinking that I was crazy for even talking about my ex. I was so conditioned by them to think yeah. that if I talk about an ex relationship, if I hang out with any of our friends, if I even begin to talk about trauma, that's me being crazy and that's me being obsessed. Well, even now, even today before going live, I even question cancelling it and being like, people are going to think for fuck's sake, here she goes again. Uh. I almost thought about canceling on you and just not getting up <laughs> to come here. I mean, we're mutually just like, it's yeah, no. It, no, it is. We're, we're both literally scared. And there is, oh, I'm, so, I'm genuinely fucking terrified. And even when I tweeted, when I tweeted the other day, I ended it by being like, I'm tweeting off of my alt account because I'm scared of the people that will see it on my main and be like, oh, here she goes. But the people that would be like, oh, here yeah. she goes, are the people who know what's going on and are staying quiet about it. Yeah, we, it's just, those opinions are ones we shouldn't pay any mind to because those are also people that do not know the truth um, as closely as we do and the people that we care about the most mm. do. And that matters more to me. But yeah, ever since, I think, I don't know how you felt after doing your stream, but for me, after I did my, my video and seeing how many people, like the sheer number of people that messaged me being like, I've been through something similar. I've just realized that mm -hmm. something that's happened to me is actually abuse. All of the things, I just became so passionate about raising awareness you for it, it up. yeah literally i was like okay they get me going get me going because i'm very I lucky where i'm in a position where i do not care for my ex anymore and for a long time i was getting like even to this day I, I have this thing where if he gets brought up if my friends say oh i bumped into this person or anything like that or mention him or make me think about that time in my life i shake i go mm -hmm. like my legs go really numb like i feel like i'm gonna fall over like all sorts and i thought I was like, why could this possibly be? And I was like, maybe I, I missed them, question mark. And then I realized, I was like, that's so <laughs> fucking stupid. No, I don't. I could not care less about them now. But the, what they did and the trauma that they've left behind is so scarring. And I'm mm -hmm. uh, to, for them to be able to have the audacity to be like, if you keep, like, if you hang around on this, that's you being crazy and obsessive. I wish I could have yeah. just moved on and forgotten about it. Like, oh my God, I wish. Like, yeah, must be nice. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think the main thing that we want to do is just generally bring more awareness and stuff to stuff like this and have a conversation. Yeah. Which is why it's so difficult to talk about. <laughs> people, one of the things that people have been saying the most, and it has been a little bit of a hard thing to accept as well, is how people have been calling me brave. And I didn't feel brave simply for sharing that I had been, I had had these experiences and that these things had happened to me. I felt brave because I was still scared of him. Mm. And I am still scared of him. And... That's what made me feel brave. But I, I felt like 
I had to share my experience. That was something that I felt so compelled because I felt so passionate about making sure people, it's so important for us to share the experiences that we have with each other. And I think especially as women. Oh my God, yes, as women. Like I like the amount of people that have said to me that they feel more comfortable talking about things since hearing somebody else talk about it. And it, it's scary, like genuinely the sheer amount of people who have messaged me being like, I have a very similar experience is actually really quite terrifying. And I wish it, I wish it didn't, I wish it came before us. I wish people didn't even feel a need to keep this hidden in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that it should be something that we, we talk about openly because, oh God, like you, it, it feels like you're letting them win. And for a long time, I thought that I had my yeah. peace when I like kind of settled and I was like, okay, I've dealt with this happening to myself. And I went to therapy and I got through it. And I really felt like I reached a point where I was like, do you know what? It's so unfair that it happened, but all mm -hmm. I can do is, is, is learn from it and grow. And then things started happening to my friends, and that's, that's when I got heated. Than them, oh yeah, the oh one thousand percent. That we learn and we grow. <sighs> because oh yeah, okay. I have so many notes. I just don't even know how to go from point to point. We're both just sat here. I like, always had to Ugh. keep notes. I have an entire. That's just one note thing that we can keep our thoughts straight, and also we had to keep our reality straight by keeping notes. I used to, that was one habit that I picked up because I'm realizing now that there are a lot of habits and things that I do that are an aftermath of the relationship that I was mm -hmm. in. And one of them like is anytime thing. anything happens, whether I'm drunk or not, whether I've had a drink or not, <laughs> I, I write everything down. Anything that happens mm -hmm. to me on a night out, I write down because I get scared that people won't believe me if I don't have evidence of having written it down at a point. Or if they try to tell you that that what you believe is true isn't the truth. Oh, my favorite! I love, I love <laughs> that part. That's my favorite part. Um, but one thing that gets me fired up is lying. <sighs> I just have such a... Just at least I would have there. had such a no tolerance for it. I, I don't know about you. In this relationship, I became an entirely different person. Mm. Everything that was like a core belief of mine, I had abandoned. Yeah, I don't, I, I genuinely can't look at photos of myself during that time because mm -hmm. it makes me really, like, I just can't do it. It's not me. I'm looking at the person, I I'm like, who are you? I go to that country for, for a long time. Oh, Because that I had that pit in my stomach during the relationship. And it is still a pit in my stomach when I, I think about that time when i go there not anymore now i feel i do feel healed but i had my my like body response that need to throw up <gasps> genuinely i saw a tiktok and you know that's like me saying i did some scientific research and read the news i saw a tiktok and it genuinely is crazy <laughs> how much your body can like how much your body tells you before you even know it yes i actually did speak to somebody else who had uh, an experience with their ex and when I told her my experience with the like this pit in my stomach, I was always nauseous and, and needing to vomit. She was like, I didn't know that was part of it. She hadn't mm. heard that before, that your body will respond. And she's like, this makes so much sense now for my experience. Yeah, I like, because, oh yeah. God, I had like, I had my eczema was really bad. I had all sorts going on oh. that genuinely just disappeared off the face of the earth the second we went together anymore. But one thing for me was like, I, I used to feel nauseous. And I remember, cause there was a point where we were very, on and off in the degree of we were going to get back together again and then we weren't but i remember giving them a hug and then being like give me a second i think i'm gonna throw up and i thought it was because i'd been drinking and mm. i remember like going and being like okay like a visceral i'm gonna throw up feeling and then i was like okay no, no i'm fine a couple weeks later when we spoke again i was like no i'm gonna throw up again and like genuinely anytime i hugged him i felt like i was going to be sick you know what one time when i was eight I had this neighbor down the street from me and she was awful. She was one of my first bullies. Um, and every time she came over to my house, I would get a stomach ache and my mom thought I was making it up and lying that I was feeling sick and didn't want to play with her. And, but I was genuinely sick every time she came near my house. <gasps> That's it's so a crazy. Real thing. It's so real. It's like gut instinct, 1000%. It just like takes a second. Feel, like they don't, you don't feel good when you're around them anymore. That's the thing. No, why are my ads running? Why don't you turn my ads off before I start stream today? I didn't even know how to do that when I did mine. Um, Wait, so monetization ads. But you know, if I have to get a little bit of ad money, it's okay. Whatever. Let me turn this off. Okay, one and a half. Save changes. It's, it's only letting me go down to half a minute. Okay, I do not care about ad revenue. Twitch, you really give me nothing anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I digress. I hope that is um there. But um. Yeah, do you know what one thing for me is that I really, really wish that I could talk about an experience without it linking to a person. It's a thing for mm -hmm. me because I really want to 
be able to bring awareness to something without there being a mm-hmm. thing that's like, oh, you're so obsessed. You're so obsessed. Like, no, it's an experience and it's something it's that an changed issue. my brain chemistry. It's not about the person. L- I'm my not Roman about Empire. the person. <sighs> it is my Roman Empire. Literally. Just knowing, my Roman Empire is knowing how many people are victims and <sighs> how many people are not aware that they're abusers half the time. They just don't see their own actions like uh, in this lens it's scary because do you know the thing the the thing is is that like and bear with this point i the the latter half loops it back around as i've always been a big believer in change i think that's why for a long reason i refused to accept the actions of the person who hurt me because i was like why did we stay so long if we thought they could if we didn't think they could change we thought they were going to change exactly and i vividly remember them apologizing to me and being like sorry that i had to learn this about myself by treating you this way and i went no it's fine because i can sort myself (laughs) out I literally said, no, it's fine. Don't apologize because now that now that you know this, it's fine because I can like try and sort myself out, but you and you can sort yourself out as well. But it was fully like at, at my expense. But I always believe in change it's and that people can get better expense. always every time. But even if you were to change, you could disappear up into the mountains and come back a completely different person months later. You still need you to be- You said come down as the Messiah. I, <laughs> I did say the Messiah <laughs> when I did the voice note. But you have to be held accountable for what you did. And I always use the example of if you kill someone, but then disappear and then come back and you're a completely different person and you're like, whatever. That doesn't mean you didn't kill someone. Like you, you still- but Do you not still have to deal with the consequences? consequences and anybody who is a grown and changed person will accept the consequences exactly and it's like we don't see that happen often right and it's like if, if you didn't and I, I, we've said this since the beginning of time if you don't want to be known as a shitty person don't do shitty things then it's so plain and simple and easy no but that's why but another some reason people actually think they can do whatever they want and as long as they protect the image because the image is they think it's just as good as the truth i think and that's on us and that's why they lie and that's <laughs> literally that's another that's another reason why people spend so long to come out with their stories i know that was me because i was like if i do this and every time i talk about this more i feel like i'm permanently painting this person as a bad person and even like personally between me and this person personally i'm like every time i talk about this they're gonna know more and more what i think of them and they're gonna hate that i'm making this public but it's like if you don't want your actions to be known by people why would you act that way yeah, then don't act that way. You know what I mean? Jeez. Easy, easy I win, want guys. I people to, to think of me as a nice person when they meet me. So you know what I do? I'm nice to them when I meet them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, wild concept. It's absolutely crazy. No, catch me at the next TwitchCon just pushing you know, people into the, the bloody canal. For real, because you know what it ends up making me feel? And I know that it's not true, but it, it truly sometimes will feel like being nice isn't going to be enough. Especially not in, in this certain space. Mm. It just feels like... Being a good person isn't enough. Yeah, that's the big thing I've dealt with recently because like I said, I reached a point of real peace and then recently for the first time in my entire like healing process, I've been angry because I've realized how dirty I've been done, not just by Mm -hmm. the person at hand, but by- So many times. Everyone, by like so many people and like- And we just have to pick ourselves up and keep going. Keep letting these people try out dating us. And I, I don't want to make it all about men and women, but we can't deny that it is often an issue between men and women. 1,000%. Mm. And it, what scares and, me... Oh, no. Finish your point, ma'am. No, no, no. Yeah. No, it's, it's you go. <laughs> I had to read I was my notes. Say, my, my real Roman Empire, because we touched on it just a second ago, just to reiterate, is like uh, the thought of how many people's backs are these people climbing over to finally become a decent human being? And why does it have to be at the cost of so much suffering of other people (laughs) the fact that i genuinely find it so twisted that i was so fine with being the way that i like being treated the way i was treated as long as that person got better like i was genuinely like no it's absolutely fine that you completely ruined my self-esteem the way i perceive myself the way i think others perceive me every like so many aspects of my life and left me with a lasting trauma but that's fine because as long as you manage to sort yourself out and they didn't even yeah and then they don't even but it's the way that I thought maybe it's my, this is my purpose is to be that person that helps people grow. And then maybe one of them will pick me in the end. <laughs> and even if one person watching some of the stuff we talk about realizes that like that's their scenario and that's what they're involved in, then like that makes me happy because I just refuse to kind of be quiet on the situation. Again, I don't care for exposing people. I don't care for no, making a scene. I care for about. bringing awareness to the situation. It's not an expose. Yeah. It's like, it's like actually advocating people... for something. 
Yes, if you are experiencing things like this, leave. If you are somebody who is doing these things, stop. Yeah, I think the big- Go to therapy. <laughs> yes, please, for the love of God. But I think but the also big that thing... isn't an answer to all problems. No, yeah, too fair. I, I do I do believe every single, I think everyone should go to therapy. I'm a big believer in that. I but agree. like, sometimes you can't, like, you can't send, sometimes you can't send a narcissist to therapy because they will just lie. No, not, they will lie. They will lie. They will, it's not even a um, might, they might, they will. They have <laughs> lied about, as far as my experience, they will lie about small things and big things. How can you ever trust anything? That's what makes me sad. I, sometimes I recount things and I'm like, was any of that real? Like, was like even yeah, a single one? Yeah, I, I really actually think no. And it, it kind of hurts me to think that because I want to believe some of it was yeah. still. <laughs> but I think my big thing at the moment has been how people are held accountable has been my big issue at the moment. Because mm -hmm. one thing that I wondered, like I was very aware when I shared my story that there were going to be people who acted like they didn't know that I said it. Because I knew that you you know mm, when you tell your story that all of your friends and all the people who know about your relationship will know who it's about. And I knew mm. that there were going to be people that were their friend who would just act like I never said it, would never even like, it wasn't even mm -hmm. like something that actually happened. And one of the big, the big two questions I got from people was, oh, do you know if he's seen it? And also, why didn't you say his name? Those are the two questions that everybody asks. Like, for how am I supposed to know if he saw it? In the end, I found out that he did, which is always funny. So hope he yeah, enjoyed that watch. But um, <laughs> the big thing is like, people are always like, why don't you say the name? Why do you say the name? That's a big thing I saw on Twitter was people yeah, being like- people were like, she would have if she wanted to. And that was actually pissing me off. Not even for my sake, but for, I was thinking about people like, like just everyone who has experienced this and it isn't as simple as they would if they just wanted to no like, i literally wrote down an entire list of things number one especially in like when you're posting something to twitter or talking about it on social media a fear of not being believed point blank you can talk about something and people can just be like no you're lying i don't believe yeah. that fear of people thinking you're being dramatic i loop back to the point i said at the beginning of anytime i even tweet or allude to being passionate about this kind of topic i get scared that people who know that who i'm talking about go god you're so obsessed and you're just making a scene for, for clicks for views like fuck what i care Number I don't four. think anyone who matters thinks that about you exactly. at all. And that's something I've learned. If somebody's going to think that, then that's not your friend in the first place. Uh, next, a fear of exposing people who do still support them. That's always been my my big thing is that like, if I, if imagine if I were to say, say, say someone's name and then I'm immediately putting anyone who still associates with them under the bus. Mm -hmm. And that for me is like a, a guilt that I don't know, like, I don't know, you make your choices with the people you interact with. And if you choose to know that about someone and ignore it and not hold them accountable, then that's your choice. But I don't know, it, for me, that was something where I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can cope with that. My anxiety will just go through the fucking roof. Um, no, I think that it's a big deal when somebody knows, like if, if they know that their friend abused their ex-partner, to then just continue a friendship and not at all have any expectation for them to change their behaviors and just like there's no integrity in these friendships where like it is just we will support you no matter what you do that's yeah. just what bros do yeah like, that just... isn't how friendship is supposed to work that isn't what friendship is supposed to be about if i knew of one of my friends abusing somebody you i i, I like i just knowing the people that have hurt my friends, I can't ever look at them the same. I can't. I literally said the same. I was like, I, I was trying to think because luckily I have no friends who are, uh, none, none of my like close friends are uh, abusers. But I, I sat there no, and I was like, what if I, what if, but you know what, that's so crazy. It's but funny I, how that happens. Right? But I sat and thought, I was like, genuinely, if my like best friend, if something came out about my best friend and it turned out that they had done something horrible, what the fuck would I do? And I was like, genuinely, my brain was like, I don't actually know. But you know, the number one thing I wouldn't do would be to point blank ignore it. Do you know what I would sure as hell do? Would, yeah. would hold them the fuck accountable and make sure yeah. that they're held accountable and make sure that they, they get things done. And do you know what? is so crazy in the time between me doing my video and the conversations i've had with some people i've had some very lovely conversations with people where they've like said some very helpful things to me when i first started going to abuse therapy i was so conditioned into thinking that if i say anything about my ex that it was obsessive behavior that i just stopped mm -hmm. i didn't say anything and i was in a i was in a therapy and then i got referred to abuse therapy and i didn't tell anyone because i was like if this person finds out that i've told anyone that i'm in abuse therapy they're gonna think i'm trying to ruin their life 
So I didn't tell anyone. And then when, one mm. night I was talking to somebody who was a mutual friend of both of ours. And I was like, they were asking how I was. And I was like, oh yeah, do you know what? Things have actually been a bit rough at the moment. I'm, I'm actually in, in abuse therapy at the moment. And this person turned around and went, yeah, that figures. And just mm. continued on with the- Excuse me? A friend of both of ours who'd known us whilst we were together, who had known us after. The day before I did my video, I was having a conversation with someone and they were like, oh, I can't even remember how it came about. They, uh, like, I don't know if I can talk about the details before it without it being like alluding too heavily to who it was. But the conversation basically mm. went where he was like defending my ex. And I was like, you do realize that I was in abuse therapy, right? I've been in abuse therapy. And this guy went, oh, yeah, but like, he's going through a hard time as well. And I was like, <laughs> abuse therapy. And then he went, yeah, you guys just weren't meant to be together. It just wasn't supposed to That's like. That's not an acceptable response to your friend abusing his partner. That is not acceptable. That it, is, <sighs> that is, that is what pisses me off. And that's what baffles me. That I, I was told stuff like this for so long and I always just went, okay, like people just don't have to do that. But now I think about it. And again, if it were my friend, I would not be able to sleep at night knowing that I wasn't holding them accountable and was continuing to no. platform and advocate for somebody who is capable of doing that. You are allowing them, not you, they're allowing them <laughs> <Me>. to stay, <laughs> stay in this position where they will continue to be able to hurt people as well. And that's what I'm not okay with is that they just, they are not holding each other accountable. They have no standards in their friendships at all for behavior with each other, which I think is a dangerous like back and forth of just letting each other do awful shit to people. It is, but you know what, actually, I do want to bring attention to something that you said to me one time. You had a really good quote. I'm pretty sure it's from mm. Bojack Horseman. Oh. <laughs> it's such a good quote. So I want anybody who's going through the same yes, thing. This is my quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah directly from I Shelby's brain. But I, I go through <laughs> a long phase where I'm, okay, maybe just a pushover. But do you know what? I genuinely just will always try and see the best in people. And I sent a message to Shelby and Rihanna one night where I was like, do you know what? I really just don't believe that they ever meant to do what they did to me. I just feel like, I feel like they didn't realize like it was all like an accident yeah or... it wasn't intentional yeah, and shelby said this belter of a quote and i just feel like everyone needs to hear it <laughs> hey, wait do you have it i don't remember it fuck let me scroll and find oh, it am i supposed to have it oh shit, shit. <laughs> i thought you'd off the top of your head oh dang this is not oh, very wait, girl boss no, of us it? god we talk so much we do talk too much wait too there, much. i would have said bojack you would oh yeah oh my god you're such a discord whiz was it in here? Oh, there's a line in Bojack. Ah, this is good actually. I'm glad I remembered it then, and Wait, but I didn't now. Let me find. Let me find the. Let me find the message that I sent. Just so there's full. Oh, did I have voice note? Okay, okay. Wait. Oh, for fuck! Oh, we're bad at this. Okay, I go. Um, honestly, I do think he is a good person somewhere in there, and he's just so lost in mm. mental illness that he refuses to resolve. Which is why I didn't say his fucking name because I want it to be a wake up call. I don't understand how he always seems to hit a new goddamn low. Do you know what? I normally wouldn't say that on stream, but fuck it. Yeah, you heard it here first. And then, <laughs> and then, oh, Shelby said this, and it's so good. And then I came in. I said, "There's a line in BoJack Horseman, uh, Horseman where he asks, do you think I'm a good person deep down?'" Uh, and I don't remember who he asked, but they said, I don't think there is a deep down. I think you are what you do. And I think that's true. Deep down, what else did I say? I think I, deep down doesn't count for fuck all. That's that, a that, that, that was so, that, that was, was, that was so badass of you. Because again, when you're stuck in this situation, like people are always, it, it's so hard to empathize with somebody who's been through this because you genuinely sit there and go, why didn't you just get the fuck out? It's so easy to say that. I promise you when yeah. you're in it, I can't even explain to you like how, well, I can, mm -hmm. well, I have to explain to you, you know, but um, like <laughs> well, how, yeah, how did well, you get I out? I have always had sympathy for people that might have found themselves in, and especially specifically physical abuse, and, but emotional abuse too, but just like, the thought around physical abuse, I, I had mentioned, I always thought, like, if somebody hit me, there's no way I would stay after that. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, um, like, I'd know better than to be in a situation like that. But I also had so much sympathy for people. Like, I, I would never blame somebody for staying. And I finally understand how you how you end up staying. Yeah. Because uh, I just thought I wouldn't end up being there in the first place because I thought I would be able to avoid that. That is a key thing. I was always just like, I wouldn't be so silly. And I vividly remember once I got out. It wouldn't be me. Yeah, I remember getting out and people being like, Lexi, this isn't good. And I was like, don't be so silly. I would never, ever, ever 
Mm -hmm. let that happen to me like do you, you think i'm dumb but i just think that's such a good quote because it's so easy to afterwards like because you're so conditioned to think that you're the issue i still have days to this day they're... where i'm like that mm. yeah and that's that's 100 what they want you to say because that's what they're telling themselves is that but deep down they're not a bad person but mm. you cause so much suffering until you decide to finally grow up and these are grown fucking people these are grown fucking people, which is so twisted. Also, I do want to say something really quick because a lot of my tweets have been taken out of context on the excellent oh, same, site of Twitter.com. I'd like to say all of my tweets are about my experiences. And but if the shoe fucking fits for my friends, there we go. If I find myself in one more compilation or being used to evidence something that it is oh, not yeah. evidence we for. Are talking <laughs> vaguely. I am like I'm always talking about my scenarios and about me. And like, it's not, let's not get I'm talking twisted. about other people's scenarios, but I just happen to have a lot of friends that have also shared their experiences oh, if with the me. I feel so grateful they felt comfortable doing that with me. Yes, that makes me very happy. <laughs> I, remember, I remember us going out for coffee. I, do you remember when we went out for coffee that one time when you were, when you were over here? And time. I think it was the first time, it was me, you and Amesy. And it was the first yes. time that I ever sat and like properly told the story. Cause it was around the same time that I first yes. told Amesy. And you were like- I remember. You were like, wait a minute, <laughs> cut the cameras. Yeah. I actually felt bad cause you were telling your story and I kept having to be like, wait, me too. <laughs> that was, I feel like I, I genuinely don't think I would have been able to have the strength to share half of the stuff I have if it wasn't for the, the girlies that I have around me. I think it's really sad to say, but that is actually a yeah. little bit a part and of it, girlhood. It, and we have so to share the weight. And it's so, it's so twisted that like, it's like a, not glad we all went through this, but glad we all went through this so we have each other. We had each other. Yeah, because I genuinely don't know what and, I would have done. I mean, I actually don't think that there's a woman we know that hasn't had an experience. Which is so fucked like, up. It's very fucked up. Oh God, I keep, I'm doing my notes out of order because my, my instinct keeps keeps running in. But um, yeah, a, another quick point that I do <laughs> want to say in regards to um, to just generally social media, um, is that performative activism and performative support of abuse victims is just as damaging, if not more damaging, than saying nothing. Yeah, I think that we can tell when you're just taking the side that's the popular side at the time. It does not go unnoticed. Oh, oh my God, there's so much I could say on this point. But just know, if you're only calling, like, there are some people, oh, hmm. Oh, ah, <laughs> don't, ah! <laughs> don't, it's just, I, I noticed because I felt like you needed what I received and you didn't get that. We both deserved it to be supported by so many people. And just that, there's lines that you do not cross as people. You do not abuse people you do not they're like there are these lines i said that i think make you a bad person if you cross them messing with kids i think that's that's one of those lines you never cross or you're a bad person and if you're going to excuse that for the people around you and not treat it equal when you have two victims of abuse now but you did not treat them the same if you're real fucking loud about one person but when it's your friend you're silent you're a part of the problem to be so fucking for real and you are a part of the problem like i said it it's fake <laughs> yeah and after i did my video like i said i was so prepared for people to act as if i never said anything i was so prepared for people to continue to platform the person who hurt me and i was like Do you know what okay i'm gonna have to be at peace with that why the fuck did i ever think that that was normal why am i at peace with that why is why why am I sat here like, do you know what? Oh. I got abused, but I have to be prepared for my abuser to continue to get platformed. It's normal because the sad reality is that a lot of these people that have platforms are not good people. And, and it doesn't, it doesn't benefit them to support me. It doesn't benefit them to to no. be supportive of my story. It benefits them to, okay, sorry, I find. I think that it's actually likely true that a lot of people that end up in this space, unfortunately, have to have like, to some extent, some level of an ego. And I think some, there's a various number of potential narcissists just, just lurking around because I'm not surprised that they would get themselves in a position of having power and a platform like this by just using the things that they do to manipulate people. And I really don't want to be that person, but it is 99.9% .9 of the time men. And there is one point that I have written here that was something that I was like, do I touch on this or do I not? And when I was thinking about telling my story, every single person who said, yes, do it, were the people, but were girls. The only people who yeah, ever my... said no to me were men in the social media space. That is also true for me. 
that was the only no I got. And that but was what she I wrote. understood as well. But it was it's just it noticed that all of the women were like, yes, and it makes me so mad. But, and it's like, obviously, you're like, I'm treading very carefully here. But it, it, it is just so fucking frustrating that it's like, you can't sit. And, you know, there are, like, people, you can't back and support people only when it benefits you and it makes you look good to do so. The call's coming from inside the house. If, you, if you're, if you like, being supportive of one person when you live under the same roof, you filmed the, with the same person who did the exact same fucking thing... You're part of the problem. I have to wonder, like, what is what is too far for them then? If this isn't enough for them to, like, say something to, at least say something to their own friend, like, you have to change or I will not be your friend. This is not acceptable behavior for adults. Grown it's, fucking It's like, adults. what are you gaining? Like, actually, what are you gaining from it is my big question. Like, what do you gain from supporting someone like that and not holding them accountable? Because you're bad friends. They gain support for them to not be accountable later. That Because that, that's the only thing I can think of is that, like, I feel like if you hold someone accountable, they are far more likely to exhibit signs of change. That's, you're a good friend. If you are holding people accountable, you are a good, but Rihanna, do you wanna join the call? Um, if, if you're holding someone accountable, they're far more likely to change for the better. And you can, th that makes you a good friend. If you are just yes manning them and allowing them to do this behavior without showing any kind of consequence. I had, oh, okay, I can't say that, but. You know, what I find is the most disappointing is that there is this opportunity when we come forward for all of these people who know our truth is the truth, because the people who are close to us know, mm. um, for them to rally and be with us, be true allies to abuse victims, and just finally shut out these people that treat other people this way. Like, we could eliminate them all if we actually stood together on what was the truth, but some people don't have integrity like that i guess mm, it's just like what have you got to gain from it because all this got in my opinion all that's going to happen is if it ever eventually does come out you're going to look awful like you, mm -hmm. like you know what i mean because again when after i made if my video that whole time. yeah i after my video i went to like an event every person stopped me and was like how are you i saw the video fuck that guy mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, there's no excuse for you to not know. You were there, you were there, you were there. There are motherfuckers who saw stuff that happened to me. Motherfuckers who told me like, I'm really sorry this is happening to you. And the second I made the video went radio silent and continued mm -hmm. to support the other side. And that's not me saying that what I video? want- I didn't see a video. No, like, oh, sorry. And that's like, I don't, Wait. I'm not sat here being like, oh my God, I wish like the person that did this to me actually like burns to the ground. No, I want them to just be fucking held accountable. You are a part of the problem if you're being held accountable. I don't want them to hurt more people. I don't want them to to think they can carry on moving forward behaving this way. And just thinking that they have all the time in the world until they decide to be a grown fucking person. It just stems from self-preservation. Or never, or never, they never have to. That's what bothers me is that they actually don't ever have to change or grow. No, as like- That's the standard they've set in their own, is that they just don't ever have to. They will never hold each other accountable. And the difference between that and then us sat here even debating if we say our stories because it could just be a, a, like a yell into the fucking abyss and that we'll just be told that we're being dramatic or we're making a scene we are or like, oh, I wouldn't to talk about that quiet. if I were you. Like just sit, like, and don't get me wrong. I sat quiet for a long time because I, the parameters of what I thought were normal were so warped and fucked that I went through therapy and barely told anybody. I did all this stuff and was quiet. Even for doing the video, there were people telling me not to make the video. And I was like, no, I feel like I need to as like a part of my healing process. I us. needed to i knew that i needed to like, like no one was going to talk me out of it because i knew i had to exactly and i'm so happy that like i've reached the point now where i'm not like necessarily upset don't get me wrong i go through phases because healing from stuff like this is not this is not linear and i have i don't yes. think either of us had had a long enough time to be completely healed i go through phases where i wake up in the middle of the night because they've appeared in my dream and i have instant panic attacks and i'm like mm -hmm. i like i'm like can't move out of bed but i'm at the point yeah, now where I i'm said, just angry I Oh yeah, anger, I'm just that angry. was a tough one for me. I'm like, not an angry person by nature and truly in my whole life, I haven't experienced having like real rage or like extreme anger until after this happened. <sighs> and it wasn't even, like the anger I felt was so uh, spread out where it was like directed a, a lot towards myself. I was so mad at myself. I felt stupid. Mm. Uh, because when you say all the things that we stayed through after <sighs> the fact, it's like, what the fuck were we thinking? It, no, yeah, but, Sick and it's twisted. I'm I'm also just pissed off to be a victim of physical abuse now. 
I don't want that. I didn't want that. And now I, this is just a truth of the story that I have lived now and I'm pissed off. Yeah. Do you know what is so crazy to me as well? Is that like, I didn't start getting angry until I realized that so many of my friends had gone through the same thing. When it was just me yeah. suffering, when it was just me being done dirty, when it was just me that was like being oh. overlooked. Did I care? I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. Like it kind of sucks that I can't go to this and this because this person's going to be there. It's really sad that I can't like, that I'm scared to like, I get scared to share songs onto my story in case it gets back to them that I posted a song. My favorite song at the moment is, uh, uh too well by renee rap absolute banger i've been too scared to post that on my story in case people go oh she's she's so upset she's so obsessed because that's the way my brain thinks now every single thing i I hate when people read into i i don't know if you're even the kind of person who listens to music that's relevant to your experience because i'm Mm. not and so many people will pull lyrics out of songs i've added to my playlist and i'm like i don't even know what the words are i haven't listened to them it's just it's such a like so i'm your vibing <laughs> you're like please let me vibe it's, me it's vibe. just a big point as well because like we did want to also touch on the concept of healing because we didn't want this all to be like oh, yeah. we're sat here just like chatting shit because both of us has come have come so far in our journeys but i think the most mm-hmm. important thing to say that i did touch on earlier is the fact that healing from these types of things aren't linear and i go through mm-hmm. days where i go through months where like before like things came back up for me when um when like we were discussing like you you talking about things i hadn't thought about the person i was with for months oh my god why mm-hmm. am i snoozing ads um like i <laughs> you know and i was i was fine i was so happy i, I was finally starting to have confidence in myself um my mm-hmm. perception of myself was was starting to like come oh. back together because we should talk about how that was absolutely destroyed. Oh, yeah, I feel like there are, in some, our relationship. there are some elements that people don't seem to realize that it, it's not as simple as like, oh, this person was sometimes mean to me. The way you perceive yourself no, and the way you perceive your relationships is, is actually like, it, it absolutely crumbles. There are still things that I, there are ways that I don't do my makeup. There are clothes that I don't wear. That like, there have been things that I haven't done wow. to my hair because of things that I, I, that's something i experienced in a different relationship the controlling aspect i wasn't allowed to wear um tank tops online at all i wasn't allowed to wear a bathing suit at the beach what the fuck mine was see i'm lucky that mine was never controlling i was just kind of told like oh see i i i don't understand why girls do this and it'd be something that i do and i'd be like oh oh Oh. and And that's on purpose that shit's on purpose when it's something you do and they're like i hate people who do this yeah but like, I still haven't done them since. And I remember my friend being like, I'm really sad that you don't do this and this anymore because it looked really good on you. And I was like, oh, I just don't find myself pretty when I do that now. And do I care? What I... That, do I care what, care what the person I was with thinks about me now? No. But has that stayed no, with me? Know. Yes. Yeah. That was something like my self-esteem had hit rock bottom because I was just going so many lengths of time without a kind thing being said to me at all. And just also outright mean things being said to me mm. and just mean behavior towards me. Jesus Not nice. Christ. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like, I, oh my God, just thinking about it all. Do you know what? I, I had to spend such a long time, like after everything happened, apologizing to my, to some of my friends to be like, I am Me so, too. I am so sorry if it ever felt like I didn't care for our friendship, but I genuinely felt like you weren't my friend. Because after oh. things ended, I was told by people like, why are you talking to this person? That's my friend. Why are you talking to this person? That's my friend. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I- <laughs> Because, well, what was it that you just said before that part? Because I had exactly, the, oh yeah, yeah, I had to go around apologizing to friends because I had become a bad friend mm. um, through the relationship. I had, I think also that I was being put in the position that he was forming a wedge between me and my friends, um, like on purpose, trying to se- separate me. And I often just didn't leave the house. Mm-hmm. that was uh, yeah i i went through stuff like that after where it I felt was like legitimately locked in the house <gasps> on occasion because <laughs> i really want to mention that that i was never given my own key so if he left for days at a time i could not leave and i just was like okay because <laughs> for such a long time he was supposed to make me a key and just didn't and then at for in like towards the end i was like i'll go and make my own key but also i was doing literally everything so i was like i really shouldn't have to go and make my own key but i just i just was i just sat in the house i just didn't fight back about it at all anymore i just stayed in the house i didn't try to see my friends anymore i didn't try to see people anymore or i'd have them come to see me but i wouldn't leave is that legal 
what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, because on one hand, I'll keep telling myself, I could have just gone and made a key when he was there. And I could have, but why do I have to do everything? And I just already was being abused. So I had no fight, you know? I did not know that. I think that, yeah, you lose fight. Like, here's the thing. I am, like, I'm not an argumentative person. I always say I'm not argumentative, but I'm not a bitch. Like, if someone hypes me up or if somebody says something that I don't believe in, I will yap back i'm my father's daughter but i reached a point towards mm. the end where i completely lost all yeah. fight and i instantly went from that trying to defend myself and trying to do anything i went straight to the point yes. of i'm sorry please can we like please 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 that's the same exact because i used to be such a i have an outspoken person i'm pretty like stern about and anytime there was a problem i would immediately be like hey you said this or you did this um, but I did just stop fighting it at a certain point. But I, I like I was always still trying to ask for things to stop in the nicest, kindest ways. Yeah. And then you'd be like, you're always attacking me. Meanwhile, I'm literally being treated with violence. I, I reached a point where I remember like I would be sat and my roommate would be in the room with me and I'd be crying, being like, what do I say? And she's like, what the fuck is like, what am I looking at? Like, how is this even an argument? This is like nasty. And like, I remember there would be points where I, I look back at some of the stuff that was said to me and some of the stuff that I was told and I genuinely find it nuts. Like I was outright told, like, I do not respect you. Like he, 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 he I was Dude. actually told you need to sort yourself out. I That's do not when you know they're you. telling the truth too. Cause you can tell when it's real. And the thing I was, feel like oh, I could tell as soon as like the truth slipped out, it felt like an accident almost, but I could tell it was different. Well, but then after, like after the argument to which I didn't even get a, I'm sorry, I just got a, I love you um, a few mm. hours later. Uh, I, I sent them a message being like, okay, this argument we've had is silly. I don't understand how I reached this, but we had it and it's sorted. But I just want us to discuss the fact that you've outright said to me that you don't respect me because that's actually nuts. I didn't even say, okay. I didn't even say that's nuts. I was like, it really hurt me that you would say that. And the response to that was, God, I can't believe you're bringing this up again. Why are you always trying to start a fight? That's it, like, that's why are you it. Always you were the make... problem. You're not just being quiet and... And it's scary though, because like, I'm so like, I'm so glad that we are at this point now where we look back and we realize that it's wrong because I can't even explain like it, how, how like, br like brain numbing it must have been for my friends. I've literally got Rihanna in the chat, like how many conversations I had with Rihanna, how many times Rihanna went, can I read that text real quick? And was like, let me read this back to you. Like listen yeah. to what the fuck is happening here. My poor fucking roommate, the amount of time that she would wake up and I'd be like, so this happened and she'd be like, right, okay. Or I remember like one of the time, like one time she caught, caught it on the ring. We used to have a ring doorbell. Um, and one time she was like, I actually don't want to hear it. Like actually do not talk to me because you've gone back again and I actually can't stand this. Mm. And it's like, it's it's painful because that's what you think is normal. And I it, it's like, how do you reach such a level where you think that these kinds of things are normal. And I think it's just a hard thing to ever be able to like explain to somebody who's never been through it and would be the mm -hmm. most comforting thing for somebody who has been through it to hear, to be validated yes. in saying that it's not normal. Because again, after yeah. it happened to me, I'd go, I went to like a couple friends and do you know what's so crazy um, is that the ones who were like, trying to kind of like pushing it off and like being like, oh, it is what it is, Lexi's just get over it. All men, all friends of his. Every single one. Mm. Lexi, I think you just need to get over it. Like you guys just weren't good for each other. Like to the point where I thought just, like, that like I was on the same on. level as him. I don't like what <sighs> what what <laughs> I um, can't even speak. What is the goal in friendships like that, if not just so that they can all hurt people? It baffles me because like and, I I am yeah. <sighs> because I am just like again it leads me back to my point of if my best friend turned out to be someone who was abusive I, I don't think I'd be able to completely cut them off I really don't think I would but I would sure you'd as at least have to start yeah. with you have to change yes that is not okay. exactly and I would be like this is not good get your ass into therapy I'm going to sit here and, and remind you every don't... day and if you don't show if they don't show you change actively them. yes exactly exactly because that is someone who will not change and, and that is not someone you should be friends with. And maybe I'm going to be a little bit outspoken with this one because it's very particular to, mm. to obviously my situation. But um, nine, like eighty percent of the people that haven't spoken up about the person that I was with was because they had the exact same experience with him. Some people don't speak mm. up because they're just as scared of them as you are. Repetitive behavior. Yeah. I don't understand how you can hear someone doing something to somebody else, see them doing it to multiple other people, and still continue to associate like, yourself. Yeah.
and I don't know. I don't understand it. I, I could never, once I know that somebody has hurt somebody close to me, I can't think of them the same anymore. Because I, I, it takes a lot to be the kind of person to do these things. To be the kind of person to physically abuse or emotionally abuse another person. Holy shit. It's not something that comes to me but out of habit. It's not something that I go, oh, I'm going to do this now. Oh. <laughs> like, I have such a core memory of, like, telling the person I was with, you were abusive to me. And I know this because I went to therapy. And the first thing they said back to me was, give me three examples of when I was abusive to you. Oh my God. I'm going to fight you on all of I them. gave three off the top of my head and they went, well, in that case, you're the abusive one. <laughs> and I went, how? And I went, give me three examples of when I was abusive. <laughs> and he went, what? he went, you'd cry and you were never happy. Oh. Dude, you really dampened the mood. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that I cried when you said that you didn't respect me or that I was too sad after my friend died or that I was too much to cope is it with. Abuse is or... when you have feelings. Oh my you God. You have feelings upon me. How dare you? But it's scary because again, I always say this as well. If I was in, after my relationship ended, so many people came to me, every single fucking person went, I'm so glad you're out of there. I'm so glad you're out of there. Mm -hmm. And part of me was like, dang, why didn't anybody say anything whilst I was in it? Because people were saying stuff like, genuinely, it was getting concerning. My best friend, like my best friend and my roommate towards the end were like, please get out of here. It reached a point where my brother mm -hmm. was like, I'm going to drive and get you because I'm getting concerned about the condition that you're in. I was so ill. Yeah. It made me physically ill. And I've completely forgotten the point I was making because I just got so visceral <laughs> into thinking how I felt during that time. Fuck, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got what I was saying. Oh, when I read chat and think at the same time, it's a bad combination. What was I saying? Wait, that's. <laughs> oh, why didn't I say um, something before it ended? Okay, yeah, I got it, I got it. And then afterwards, all these people, my friends were like, I think it was a learning experience for you both kind of thing before they realized how bad it was. And um, I was like, why didn't any of these people say anything to me whilst I was in the relationship? And I realized that if they had, and a few of them had, I would not have believed them. I would have been like, no, you don't know my relationship. Oh, yeah. I, I, please, can you leave it out? And it's so I sad. I was lying to my friends to protect, because I knew that if I told them what was really going on and like the full truth of my situation, they would be like, Shelby, you can't stay in that anymore. You have to leave. I just stopped telling my friends stuff. I stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people would ask, are you good? And I was like, yep. So good. So good. So good. And then when I, oh, and then like you see all these things, and you experience all these things just for afterwards, it's... have nobody get held, see this person not get held accountable to any degree. And then for me to then see people be like, oh my God, I met so-and-so. Oh my God, I love so-and-so. And see them continue to be platformed. I wasn't going to deep the fact that I wasn't going to go into detail about the fact that like the person I was with did content creation or anything like that, because I don't think it's like particularly necessary. And I wanted to talk more about the experience, but it is so, I can't even explain to you how, not humiliating, I don't even know what the word is, to see somebody who completely destroyed so many aspects of your perception of life receive love online is fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. Even more so they when they're receiving- people. Exactly, and even more so when they're receiving love because people are giving them a platform who know, who know what happened. Mm -hmm. I think that's my issue at the moment. I just don't understand how people sleep at night. But in regards to like actually like the, the signs of it, I think, I know it might just seem like we're both just kind of throwing out things that happened to us and being like, oh, but this happened, and this happened, and this happened. Because sometimes which is it so takes- valid. Which is so valid as well. But sometimes it takes hearing that to go, oh shit. Like literally what happened to Shelby and I, we went for coffee and I was saying stuff that happened and Shelby was going, oh, that actually sounds kind of similar to this. Wait a minute. <laughs> it took, like I didn't even tell the the story about biting for maybe seven or eight months after the relationship. Cause I didn't even- I wasn't even thinking about it at all. You don't even just, question. You think it's normal. I didn't question it. I, I didn't even think at all about the fact I was being hurt. And I was like, just that's normal. This is all fine. That was fine. It was just a bad relationship. But then I started like feeling like I, I just keep, I, I don't know what made me start thinking about it more later, but I just couldn't stop thinking about that specific mm. situation. I was like, I'm going to start telling my friends and just see what they think about this thing. And that's when people were like, Shelby, you just described abuse. That's like <laughs> escalation in physical harm. <laughs> And also just there was a general no, no caring of my well-being that I experienced without a doubt. 
Yeah, it's, uh, like I think sometimes it's like, it is like that thing of you allow yourself to go through so much because you're like, I can handle this, I can handle this. And then the second you hear it happen to someone else, you're like, oh shit, what? And I think that is just what it it takes is like being told by external people either A, this is not normal or B, like th- mm-hmm. this, this, this and this. Or I actually put mine on Reddit and I found so many other stories of exactly the same form of abuse and exactly the same type of story. Like I thought I was reading my own story and I was like, oh, this more people have had this experience and it isn't just just, this one weird thing. And it was like, do you know what it was for me? And this is going to sound so surface level. Uh, I was on TikTok and I, you know, when you're going through the the peak breakup phase, they're like, oh, the bit where it's like, oh my God, I'm going to cry all the fucking time. And like, oh. And I did. (laughs) And I did. But um, like I was seeing TikToks and I was like, well, why are none of these hitting the nail on the head of how I feel? Why is none of this, Mm. why is none of this exactly linking to how I feel? It was all like, oh, I feel this way and this way. And I was like, but none of these experiences of this breakup is what happened to me. And then it wasn't until mm-hmm. again, therapy mm-hmm. and my friends being like, these aren't normal that I realized that's why, because what happened to us was not normal. And it makes me so fucking no. mad that this was the only relationship I've ever been in because I might've saved myself earlier, but because this was the only relationship and they I knew that. I get that part. And, and I it, actually, it makes me so- breaks <laughs> my heart for you. <laughs> because Although I, my they, first they relationship was a dumpster fire too. <sighs> But that, the, that shouldn't happen to us. But, the, but, but they, the, this person, do you know what? I spent so long trying to like be, give them grace, but I I just refuse to now. I spent so long being like, this isn't no, normal. This it, isn't normal. And I'd repeatedly get told, yes, it is normal. You've just never been in a relationship. And that was an excuse that was used over and that? over. But anytime I did something and went, but I've never been in a relationship before. I'm sorry if this is like out of line. I got told that's not an excuse. Like you wow. need to get your shit together. I had this trauma from like things that happened to me in my past. And I said to mm-hmm. them, I went, I'm really sorry if it feels like I'm taking out this on you, but it is a big part of a trauma and you're like repeating actions that have happened to me in the past. And I got told, mm-hmm. don't blame that on me, sort yourself out. Yeah. And it's like, well, I, that's why I was so determined and I was so hyper aware I, that we need to need to get my ass into therapy because I refuse to let this one motherfucker ruin my entire perception of love. And knowing that- I'm so like, glad you did that. Oh, I'm pr- like, I'm really glad that I did as well. And I was just so hyper aware of it. Does this guy give a fuck? No, he's like on moving his life, uh, like doing his life. I, I really highly doubt that he even thinks about like that point in his life. But that's what it is. It's like, why should you get to like, just move on with no consequences and continue to like do this? Whilst I, despite having moved on from you, have not moved on from your actions and probably will not for a very fucking long time. (laughs) And I remember I said to him, yeah, I said to him, sorry, I keep, I just keep going. I said to him a couple of times, I was like, I am over you as much as I can be given the time. And we're lucky that we noticed quite early, but we've still got so much time. Yes. Something that I kept having to feel, (sighs) it's kind of fucked up to say grateful, but grateful that, uh it didn't go on for longer that because because i was so not willing to break up until i was forced in a position where it was the only option i had available to me i would have stayed longer and i don't know for how long they would have continued to treat me that way or worse because it had escalated i had every reason to believe it would only get worse god that actually breaks my heart man what upsets me now hearing about you talking about this being your first experience in a relationship and in love that that is so fucked up because on one no this is not normal this is not at all behavior that is normal in a relationship and i did have the same experience in my first relationship i was a little older i was 21 uh i had never had a boyfriend i had never been kissed and he took every advantage of all of the things i did not know about what goes on in a relationship. And I hadn't had sex yet. Obviously I was never in a relationship and I wasn't ready to right away with him. And he was like, you're being a ridiculous virgin and you're not being fair and you need to meet me halfway. So you need to do some sexual things with me or you're not being fair or compromising. And just, and then I still dated him and went and visited him in person after he said all of these things to me. Cause I was like, he's right. I am not being fair. It is, and you don't even, a genuine, you you don't even, first of all, that makes me still feel so fucking ill, and I'm so sorry. That's why I thought I couldn't ever, <sighs> he was so blatantly mean and calling me names, and I still went and saw him, but I thought that after that experience, I I had learned the hard way, but I thought I had learned. It's crazy. But <laughs> life is the way, way of giving you the same lesson twice sometimes when yeah. you learn. You literally, it's not like, our fault, though. And it's, it's crazy, like, just what you become used to becomes crazy. Like, I reached a point where I would do, like, a... I would, um, my friends would message me being like, um, does this person always talk to you like this? 
And I'd be yeah. like, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of, of course, of course. Like, it's, it's just, like it's, just it's just our humor. It's just our banter. And yeah, then that was my cover story. And then one time we went on a date somewhere. We went, I, I, I booked us a really cool, cool date because I'm a fucking great girlfriend. The guy who was running it, like, had to keep kind of being like, bro, shut up. Because he was being so, like, nasty to me in, like, a jokey way that even the guy running it was like, bro, are you good? Like, are you, like, that specifically, just really competitive? That experience bothers me because he, he was mean and treated me kind of, like, horribly, as a, but it was a joke. He would literally, we'd be walking on the street and he'd push me into the street or push me into objects and then laugh. And I, you have to laugh too. Yeah. It's around people. Just like, that's what I mean by like, no regard for our well being at all. And it's sad because it's like, another thing is, I always sit in, one thing that I kept thinking about was, oh, if I, if I share my story, what could they, what could they say? I'm like, is there anything that and I And they shared? will lie. Because again, when you've been gaslit, you're like, okay, maybe I was the drama. Maybe I did do something. Maybe I, like, what have maybe I- Maybe it was an what, accident yeah, every day. What have I done that they could possibly say, no, you did this? Like if my ex had the, the nerve and the audacity to go, in that case, you were the abusive one, what could you possibly take as an example of that? And I want people to be aware there is a thing called reactive abuse as well, which mm -hmm. is when you reach such a point that you do retaliate. And I and I, I didn't, I've only learned that term recently, but in my video, because I did do a video talking about my story um, for people who haven't, do, don't know about that. I used a fucking Olivia Rodrigo lyric, which is, um, Love we, we, <sighs> queen, like, which was like, we both, cause logical, the song logical by Olivia Rodrigo broke my fucking heart when it first came out because it was so, it was so, like, and at the time the grudge as well, but at the time logical just actually broke my heart because every single word was exactly, <laughs> The first line, master manipulator. <laughs> I haven't seen this song, so I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no. I know you're right. I remember because I was listening with um, Amy and Ran, and they were both just like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, go, 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 go. ouch, ouch. <laughs> but um, it, it, we both drew blood, but those cuts were never equal. And I know for a mm -hmm. fact that like, I, I would sometimes say stuff back because I just was so in a corner and so didn't know what to say that I'd say, it's, I would yell stuff back. And I remember one time, cause there was one example that they, they would always use. There was a situation where something happened and it ended with me screaming at them that they were a cunt in the middle of the street before I got into my Uber. And I was like, you're a cunt. I, like, a, like the Larry Brighton bitch I am, okay. And I got in the Uber and As I went back should. and they came back and they walked into the apartment and they were like, how dare you call me that? You embarrassed me in public. It was a 4 a.m. in the middle of Brighton. No one was there. And they were like, you've embarrassed me in front of people. You Isn't like had the audacity to yell at me. funny how they make what you did so much worse than them doing the exact same thing, if not worse, actually. But they may, they treat you like you did something worse than what they've done. And it's, it's so twisted. And again, like when I did my video, I was kind of more intent on making it about the experience than the person, because again, this is not an mm -hmm. expose. This is us talking about our point. experiences so that if for a second you go, this is something that happened to me. Wait a minute. Yeah, like wait, but that's like, that's what we're going for. But then sometimes it's once you start, okay. once you start unlocking one box, there's just a million others. And what's so sad is I only talk about things that I have evidence for. Like when I did my video, I only spoke about arguments or things that I had evidence for. And there are situations that I remembered recently that I'd forgotten about because again, that's a lovely sign of trauma is when you actively forget things that I will never be able to share because I, I don't have evidence. I learned that recently. That your memory after trauma, even specifically in a relationship, um, and it's part of CPTSD as yes. well, you you just have a worse short-term memory after the experience. I don't know that that will ever be repaired. I have had the worst short-term memory. And I think my even even my stream, like seconds later, I forgot My brain exactly fog is so doing. bad. My brain fog is so it's bad. It's really bad. And do you know another I don't thing know is that it'll ever be better. I don't know if that heals. And I'm kind of worried my memory is shit. And another thing that I do that people have noticed that is that if if I say something and someone goes, wait, what? I panic instantly. If I say something and somebody doesn't necessarily, like I remember when I first started telling my friend about this, I started giving instant evidence and stuff. And he just went, whoa, 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 Lexi, why do you think I don't believe you? He's like, why, why, are you, why are you convinced that I'm not gonna believe you? You've just instantly gone into saying evidence. Because I was so used to like what I was saying, not being taken at face value. And the one thing, it. and the one thing that wasn't exactly right would be the thing that they would pick on. Yeah. I, and I was so used to that, that I just like would instantly go, okay, but I've got this and this and this. And I've written stuff down. I've got this and this and this. Hmm. Because There's power oh. in writing things down. Make oh, sure yeah. write down everything you feel. <laughs> I was like because... Charles Dickens in my notes. I like, believe me. <laughs> but um, I think another thing as well. 
that is like i don't know if you suffer from this but this was a big thing that i went through and it's another big reason that i didn't really talk to any of my friends about what was going on was that anytime mm-hmm. something would happen if he would react in front of me if he'd do anything because this was going from the beginning we were red flags from the beginning to the point where i was told from my friend maybe give it till christmas and if you're still going like this dump him and i didn't because mm-hmm. at that point then my boundaries had kind of expanded and i was like oh no i'm used to this now this is just our is a new normal um if he'd ever storm away or do something in in, in front of people it would be my fault and he'd go you embarrass me in front of these people one of the first things I brought him to was a party in which he like stormed away from me and said something under his breath. And my friends were like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> like they were ready to throw hands. And he was like, you've embarrassed me in front of them from the get go. I'm ready to throw hands. Yeah. And there was there was one night in particular. Why are you out of- Right? Like there was one night in particular where the argument, like, and this is again me being reactive. He was saying such stuff that I remember screaming at him to get out of my apartment. And then the second he had, I felt guilty. So I chased after him. 3 a.m., middle of winter in London. I was wearing a little Halloween fucking stupid dress. And I ran out after them and, and we, we spoke in the streets. At 3 a.m., I was freezing my ass off. We had this entire conversation. My makeup was off my face. All this kind of stuff. Like, it was so bad. And because I'd run after him without my keys and my phone, I didn't have anything. So I had Mm -hmm. to say to him, can you call my roommate, please? Luckily, she was awake because she'd heard what was going on and was scared. My roommate used to stay up in case she had to intervene because she was so scared of the way that they would yell at me. Mm -hmm. And so she wakes up and she like comes and lets us in. And we go into my room, we sit down and he goes, great, she's going to hate me now. Thank you so much. Like you've answered the door crying. Like you've run out. Thanks. Like, Mm -hmm. good job. And that was such a consistent record of behavior that uh, was part of the reason why i never told people about arguments we have because i didn't want to make him look bad it was yeah. even even afterwards yeah. even after stuff had happened i hesitated making the video because i was like i'm still i still cared about him to a degree and i'm always going to want him to get better because it's clearly like to be at that level of narcissistic there is mental illness involved in that and i'm always going to want them to get better so they don't hurt more people in the future yeah but i was so aware that by saying something and putting it on the internet that is tangible evidence that you are a shitty person and i was like mm-hmm. i don't want people to like still a part of me didn't want people to think of him that way Mm-hmm. it's we're protecting them but but it doesn't matter because i made the video anyway it. and then still people still gave them a platform so who the fuck what's it gonna take i digress what is it gonna take for some like what <sighs> that is the question because you know there are Will they let each other kill people that, where is the line there are some that people you think is unacceptable People who face allegations, especially online and everybody, it it makes you think when, if there are people that face allegations and everybody like acts on it, are you acting on it because it makes you look good or are you acting on it because you truly believe that it's- And they know in their heart of hearts, which is the truth. And I just, do you feel good? That's Mm. all I have to ask. (laughs) Do you you sleep at night? Do you sleep at night doing that? Ooh, but I digress. (laughs) <laughs> I do think that these people are like riddled with guilt. If we're talking about deep down, I think that's what, what's really in there. See, that's is the like thing. suffering from guilt and trying to avoid it and lie. And I believe that they believe their own lies often too. They've like warped this reality that they, they're almost like, it's almost as good as the truth. This is the reality now. Oh, 1000%. A big thing for me was that like, so after my relationship ended, I had eight months of, might be sounding dramatic, I can genuinely only call it torment. Um, where I genuinely think that this person had convinced themselves and everyone that I was crazy. Because I would go mm-hmm. on I would go on nights out and their friends would be coming over to me saying stuff about me leaving, about me, why, you, why have you turned up? And like, these people have since apologized to me. They turn up and be like, why are you here? You should leave. It's not fair that you're here right now. And they'd come over and be like, and say for exa- example, my, my ex would leave. They'd all come over to me and be like, oh, he's gone by the way now. He's left now. As if I would go and run after him. I was just, Mm. there were nights out and I went out with three different groups of people on three different occasions. So I have three different groups of people who have seen it, where I had strangers coming over to me being like, I'm so sorry, this guy's like going around sending everyone that you're crazy and that you're like obsessed Mm. with him. So telling people that I begged him, told people I begged him to sleep with me, which by the way can, by the way can have some real serious fucking implications. Telling people that can actually make me look really quite bad. And it isn't the truth. Like, I I got to the point where I stopped leaving the house because any time I'd try and go out and like, or I stopped going out in Brighton because any time I'd go somewhere, I'd bump into them 
or somebody mm-hmm. who would say something. And I, I, to this day, I had people apologize because they were like, I didn't realize what was going on. I only knew one half of the story. And that to me is just a Freudian slip of you saying, you got told something completely different. You got told that I was crazy. Mm-hmm. And I, they, they never hear us out. <laughs> like... That there's a there's a really big part of my story that I actually can't talk about because it involves other people and like you know I only want yeah. to talk about things that I a have evidence for and b yeah have the perms for and it's sad because this guy has done things to people after me and like mm-hmm. they've stuck I, around. I was exactly but... the same. I was careful to like I wanted to stick to the facts that people witnessed and things that like could not be denied, but probably will end up trying to deny. Um, but. I didn't want to bring in any of the stories that involve other people or things that he did to them. That's for them to say if they want to, but. Yeah. And what's sad is that so many people won't because they're still stuck in that loop. And it's like, if you're with someone someone who is a narcissist and who is abusive to that degree, it's not water under the bridge. You're just, that you're losing, they're winning. Like, that's all it mm-hmm. is. It is, it is not like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I thank God every single day that I got out because I was the one that got dumped because I was so sure that I was going to stay there forever. And towards the end of the relationship, I was literally sending them presents, expensive presents as well, being like, I'm sorry, I've been a bad girlfriend. Because I was so The delusion that I me. also thought that was I was just going to be in that forever. <sighs> oh, it's, it's, sometimes I look back on things because it's, it's been a while again since I really thought out the story and like relived the story. And I, I forgot parts. I had to watch back my own video being like, oh my God, yeah, this did actually happen. Yeah. Like I at least feel really... Uh, like I have such a solid ground because I I know 100% what was the truth and because I had caught them caught them in lies like they and they have been caught in lies by many people at this point like I don't know why this is acceptable lying is a big deal to me oh yes Uh, and obviously I resorted to doing it for their protection but they like all of their friends I'm pretty like this is just a known thing that he that he has lied to people all over the place and just doesn't think that it's a big deal but there are some times that like the the lie there's one story that I really want to tell um that is just a good example I think that just like the willingness of lying about anything and also just like I think he warped his own reality basically he had uh, so at the beginning of our relationship, one of my friends, um, hold on, I want to wait for, <laughs> um, no, take your time, baby grill. I'm like letting <laughs> Rihanna type first and see what she says. Oh God, I'm not even looking at whether, okay. Wait, I, I, do we tell a story whilst you are, uh, whilst you? Yeah. Because in case, I don't my know thing was a big thing because when you love someone as well, you are implicitly trusting them. And here's my thing is like, I'm never going to not trust you. And they, they know that and they, they take advantage of that because I remember like after we broke up, I got, they, they told me a couple of times, they were like, I still check your stuff. Like I still check your accounts and stuff. I never did because I just don't think, I don't see the benefit in it. I don't see the benefit in checking on someone that you're no longer with. That's just going to hurt. And I got told that this person is like stalking on your stuff. They're checking your Twitter likes. They're like seeing, seeing- Literally obsessed with you, with. which is what they're saying you're doing. Yeah. And I remember I called them out on it and that we had this big conversation where I basically sat down um, and was like, you're doing this, this, this and this. Cause they tried to act like we were friends and they were like, oh, you all right? Tried to give me a hug at an event. And I went, no, sit the fuck down. I know you've been saying all these things about me. You were saying that I'm crazy. You were saying that I begged you to sleep with me, all these things. And he was like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Insisted that he hadn't said any of them. And what's so sad is it reached a point and he was saying, why would you trust them over me? Like, you've known me longer. Clearly this person has twisted stuff. Why are you believing them? Like, you've known me for so long. There was a reason you were with me, all this stuff. None of it happened. And what's so sad is that I really fully reached a point where I was like, oh shit, you know, maybe it did get twisted. Maybe it has all just like, you know, gotten out of hand and like we lost control of it and he actually hasn't done anything wrong which is what a narcissist does by the way they're very good at using the people around them to do their dirty work for them anytime Mm -hmm. they wanted to talk to me it was never him he would set it up so that somebody else would scott's major say it loud of the people at the fucking back um (laughs) i love you so much scott and i I, then i went okay and I, i was starting to believe him and then i went but one more thing don't stop stop checking my stuff can you stop stalking my stuff because i had photographic evidence I saw, mm-hmm. I, they went through my Twitter to a tweet two weeks prior, clicked on a TikTok link and I got a notification for it. And 
oh. and I said can you stop stalking my stuff and he went I haven't I showed him the screenshot and he went I never did that and oh. at that point it was that, that <laughs> was my Roman face. Empire that was my Roman Empire I was like oh my fucking god oh. Oh my yeah, God, you're a liar. I'm you are tell a liar. My story. That's my Roman empire of like the lie that I was like, oh, oh, okay. It, it, and that, that was actually like the breaking point where I went, okay, you're a liar. Why have I yeah. ever believed you ever? Unfortunately, I, I am ready to tell my story now. <laughs> go, go, go. Um, I didn't find out it was a lie until after we broke up. But as soon as I did, I went fucking off. Cause it, it I had been told at the beginning by somebody close with me because they just wanted me to, to kind of have a little awareness of some things he had said. And they had said that at one point he said to somebody, he thought women weren't funny. And <laughs> I obviously was not okay with dating someone who thought that. And so quite literally day two, I asked about it because I was like, I need to know what the truth is here. Did you really say this? He stands up so upset that someone would say he would say something like that. How he would never say something like that. He has so many female friends that are so funny. Um, and just was like, like pacing back and forth, really upset, uh, almost throwing away this whole friendship with this person forever claiming he would say something like that. Year and a half go by. I'm talking with someone. Um, and Rihanna is <laughs> saying that this was said to her he did say that to her face and it was something that stayed with her because it hurt her feelings and he made such a show of like i would never and he had he 100 percent had said that i think they just genuinely and I, I was like you owe her yeah i think he really believed he hadn't at that point i don't know if he was lying or just really believing his lies so deeply but I was like, you have to apologize to her. That's so fucked. And he, I almost abandoned a friendship over it. But I do believe that was part of the like driving a wedge away from me and the people that knew a little too much of things that were true about him. In, uh, in, and I don't in, even believe that he said that to you, Rihanna. I don't, I don't even think that he believed that was true. I think he just says things that are true and aren't true all over the place to get reactions, to make people feel a certain way, to make people feel bad. I truly believe he's doing things to make people feel bad on purpose. I don't think that they do that by accident at all. It's because these are people that they, we get so close with them. They learn things about us. They know what hurts us. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so sorry that I wish I had like, and also, yeah, I do want to say a point real quick that like, sorry, Rihanna just messaged me about it. For me personally, yeah, that. for me personally, I only talk about things that I um, can prove because like, I don't know, that's just my thing where I'm like- We're scared. Yeah, I'm scared. Whereas like, but if you have but an it's experience- It's not even about proof. Yeah, it's not about proof. If you have a situation and you can't necessarily prove it, but it is something you experienced, you still have every single right to share your story. Duh. Just for me, because mm -hmm. I was bringing it like, I don't know, I, just for me, for my like- other people it's it, you don't need the proof but yeah, other no. people know yeah and i think just it's, it's crazy because it's like with with narcissists which is who, what we both faced both raging narcissists it's like w why you genuinely have convinced yourself that you're not a bad person and there is one story in particular that i wasn't going to talk about oh i shouldn't talk about it i was going to talk about the um the um <clears throat> Yeah, also that was very oh. pussy slow. Yeah, but it's just, let's just, there are situations that happen where they set it up so that they look like a good person. And okay, no, okay, do you know yeah. what, fuck it. Maybe I'll just face the implications of saying it and I'll be fake. Well, you know, is there anything so specific about this that Basically, immediately... I was at an event and they were there and I was at the bar and I was getting groped by this person at the bar and it was really scary. So I texted my friend for help. My friend who was also one of their best friends. Men. Yeah, we done been new. And um, I texted them Get being there. like, this one, Scott. Yes, this one. So I texted this a friend one. being like, please, can you help me? Um, I need help. And this, this friend was a guy. And their side of the story was that they came to come into the bar to help me. And at the same time, my ex walked out and went, where are you going? And my friend went, oh, I'm going to help Lexi. She's having a situation right now. And my, and my ex went, sit down sit down and continue then to have a go at them for trying to help me then proceeded to come into the bar and storm around trying to find the person who groped me and come over to me being like you have to get them kicked out like so you have to get rid of them like why why are they like this and the other and i was like what 
And they then continue to argue with the person in front of me, say to someone who was one of their good friends and my good friend, like, you can have her, she's all yours. After stopping them from trying to help me from being groped. And when I came outside to see if they had like a jumper or something I could borrow, scoffed at me and rolled his eyes. And I never was going to tell that story because again, uh, but Rihanna's made actually a really good point to me. Why should I not tell a story just because I don't have physical proof? Because there were so many people that were there that saw that. No, can we point out how many of our friends are in here being like, they, they have heard these experiences. They, they are, I, just thank you so much to our friends who are in the chat right now because the support Genuinely, of the people yeah. who I'm are trying so to not look this, I know. And like, ooh, but I, yeah, it's really, really appreciative. But it's like, <laughs> it's all infuriating. It is because it's, it's, it is still kind of hard to let go of the anger around all of it. Yeah, and Rihanna's just made such a good point of like, yeah, I, I've only really kept the stories that I've told two stories of things that I can prove. But that situation, the yeah, reason that I told that story there, literally, and the reason I and told I that the story same. there is because it's like these people will do things to make them look good. They will actively put you in harm's way because that that's what it is again not to sound up myself or to sound like i'm such a victim but i was actively put in harm's <laughs> way there. Literally are. What, what if i hadn't have what if i hadn't have gotten myself myself out of that situation what if i was still there and i was at, in harm's way because you told someone to not help me so that you could try and help me yourself and look like the good person try to fucking white knight it so that you look good and what instead everyone done. just thinks you're a cunt that's all you've done and do you know what i find like is that narcissists will act how they think they need to act to impress you they will put on a different 100%. mask they'll put on a different mask in front of anybody to be like okay this person like somebody lie. yeah this person like somebody to who's really funny i'll be funny person. this person like somebody who's like is a big party animal I'll be a big party animal how are you supposed to like and that's another big thing where i i wasn't gonna like ever say their name besides like obviously there, there are legal implications that can come from that you're not about to right it's, imagine i'm like <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> but it's because if you if you take a narcissist and you leave them with the fact that they don't know how to act in front of people now everybody knows like you have to sit there and think who here knows what i've done and how do i need to act in order to impress them and that will drive a narcissist insane until the end of time Based priority is your health happiness and safety oh, scott's major is the love of my fucking life Scott, see, Scott's major is the best boyfriend I have ever had. <laughs> genuinely, like... Scott's major is my, my and, favorite boyfriend ever. I just want to reiterate that again. I genuinely don't know what I would have done if it wasn't for some of the people who actually helped me validate my experiences. Because again, there were people that I went yeah. to where I'd say my story and they'd be like, oh, Lex, this is just your first relationship. Like, it's just post-relationship. I hate like, that for you. I wish that I knew you sooner. Yeah. Because <laughs> I would have shaken you. <laughs> but also, oh I don't know about you. I might not have listened to anybody, even if I did tell the truth. Yeah. If I was willing to lie for them, I wasn't willing to hear... Like, I, I just wasn't ready to face it or see it that way at all. Honestly. Couldn't. Scott, I couldn't believe they would do that. Scott's major should honestly invoice me because his couch was like my therapist couch for like before I got a therapist. The amount of times I've cried in Scott's major's house is actually crazy. It's Scott's actually major crazy. Scott's cuddled me in his bed and it was the most wonderful time of my life to be held by Scott. <laughs> I, I think it reached a point where Scott actually positioned tissues next to the sofa for when he when I was coming around because he just knew. <laughs> If you need to invoice <laughs> No, please don't invoice. I wish I could invoice. I in wish I could invoice sorry. the person that put me into therapy. God, sorry that would have been great. Pillow. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and so, I was so like many... picking the, the feathers out of his pillow because I didn't know where to look <laughs> whilst I was talking. <laughs> yeah. I'm somebody that like I'm not I'm not a big um physical touch person for anyone outside of my like partner normally. Mm. Like there's a limit for me. I'm not very touchy. Yeah. Scott's major is somebody who is allowed to hold my hand whenever he wants to, and I will hold his hand whenever I want to, and he may kiss me on the cheek. I genuinely adore that man. But it's like there there are so many times where because I was so used to having people hear my story and then continue to associate or hear my story and then continue to give a platform or hear my story and kind of be like, okay, and then continue about their day as if like I'd never said it, that when I met people like, and I'm gonna name people, people like Scott, people like Amesy, people like, I could I could name so many people. people. Yes, people who when they heard about it suddenly went, oh, fuck that guy. I don't want anything to do with yeah. them. I, Unacceptable. I, I, and do you know what's crazy is that when that started happening, I went, fuck, um, fuck. Cause I was like, <laughs> oh no, I've made yeah, him. Been met with I, that I went, I've made him look bad. People are gonna stop talking to them and I'm gonna get the blame for it. And you are the problem, not their own actions. And that's about it. I was so used to it just not being validated that when it eventually did, I was like, oh, is this how people are supposed to act? Am I supposed, are people supposed to be like, that's not right. And I do think they count on us not knowing 
they, what is they count and like pushing that boundary they rely on the echo chamber that they've put you in they rely on that entirely and also, we're 100 percent relying on us being fucking quiet I think. yes and i'm also i thought of myself as a weak person throughout the relationship because I, I got so much smaller and smaller and smaller over time. I do think that they, that you even said he said he lost respect for you. I think that's true. They do because you're staying. And I just can't see how they don't look at you as like less for that. For me as well. I think it was a thing where the, my, I, don't, I was about to say, is this too harsh? No, the person I was with is extremely no. insecure. Extremely insecure. That's which, I first of all, really is the deep rooted issue. Yeah. And it, that also is an issue that is found in just generally surface level content creators because, you know, you go from being like an absolute nobody and then all of a sudden you've got like all, the, all this following and people and you're like, am I worthy of this? Imposter syndrome, like all these things are levels of insecurity. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first, like, the. I have an opinion about that. Yeah, no. But um, I remember just at, at first, all of his friends and he, he was like, you're one of the, like, the most beautiful people I've ever been with. I like, I don't know what to do with myself. And I remember when I first started figuring stuff out, I went back on the text and I would apologize. And he'd go, no, you don't to apologize. This is me. Like, this is genuinely me being insecure. Turns to be a fine thing for mm -hmm. him to say that towards the end. And as our relationship progressed, he slowly started to push that insecurity onto me, making uh, making oh, yeah. comments that weren't direct, like, like I said earlier, not controlling comments, but things like, oh, I prepared your hair and it was like this. I don't understand why girls do their makeup like this. This, that, and the other. Paying it calling my friends hot. Mm. Um, paying attention to other Ew. girls instead of me. Like if another girl yep. would walk in, he'd say, you look really nice and like compliment, oh, you look really cool. Wouldn't say anything to me. And then would afterwards you come like over. The thing that you need in front of yeah. you to other people. And then would afterwards come over to me and go, oh, by the way, you look, you look nice as well. And I'm like, cheers. And then <laughs> by the end, I was so insecure. And then he would say to me, you're just so insecure. You need to sort that out. Like you need to fix up on that. I'm insecure because you pushed it wow. onto me. I went from like, because the thing is, do I think I'm like absolute 10 out of 10 crack? Like, no, but I, I back myself. I, back, I think I'm a fun, I think I'm funny occasionally, sometimes. I think that if we were people who thought we were like, and we should think that we are 10 out of 10 knockouts. But I think that if we were people like that, we might not have been as susceptible to yeah. being taken advantage of like this. Because we do, we also have our own insecurities. It's where, like everyone, like, is, have, it's human. It's so human to be yeah. insecure. Whatever you're pointing out about me that you think is a problem, trust me, I've already seen it. <laughs> yeah, but then you pushing his own insecurities onto me yeah, and then using that as a ones. reason to yeah and that's that's i think that's the thing that took a long time because there was a point where obviously i had other things going on my life in my life at the same time like that kind of like accentuated what he was doing there was a point where i couldn't look in the mirror like i wouldn't even look at myself even when my skin was mm -hmm. doing better because i had really bad skin at the time as well even when my skin was doing better i still just couldn't even look at myself and that's part mm -hmm. of the reason why i can't look at photos of myself from the time that oh, we were together i relate to you so hard on this too because i have had skin issues that's a specific insecurity that like you feel like your face was taken away from you yeah i look back at youtube videos from that time and i'm like i can't watch them i can't watch like mm. half the content on my channel because it reminds me i look at myself and i'm like was I, I i feel like i genuinely can't look at myself during that time and think that i look nice or think that i look pretty i can't do it mm -hmm. and it sucks e even now even and afterwards we are 10 out of 10 oh on god <laughs> oh god, <laughs> oh, on god. <laughs> But um, yeah, because skin issues are hard enough to deal with because it's something we both went through as well. That's hard enough to go through, period, yeah. when it's just you yourself Some people and you. Don't really know. Like, that's that. But then on top of that, to have somebody who was like, oh, anyway, but um, that is on projection. <laughs> but um, that's another thing. Yeah. Sometimes they project literally their own issues onto you as well. Like, it's because you become, and that's the reason why sometimes they can get rid of you so quickly and why narcissists just move on to a new person so quickly, because you become like an amalgamation of all the things that they hate about themselves. And the, yeah, and it's the point, in front of their face. To the point where they think that you're the issue, and by getting rid of you, will solve their issues. But you know what? Big fat shock. You're still gonna wake up the next day the same motherfucker, and you will just continue to hurt people until you hurt somebody who won't be as nice as me and will name you. Ye yep. That's how I felt about. Um... Shoot. Oh shoot. I had a thought and I lost it immediately. Oh yeah, you were gonna um... you were gonna say something about my point of um. Insecure oh, I lost that already. Oh ages fuck. Ago. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, he had made a point at the end of after we broke up that he was like maybe it would have been different if you lived here. It would not have been any different cuz you were the same person. You were not different. You would not have been different. Literally, I sat and, and I thought And that was back. the issue. Exactly. I sat and I thought back and I went, what if I hadn't have said this? What if I hadn't have said this that led to this argument? What if I wasn't ill? What if I wasn't this? What if my what if my friend hadn't yeah. died was one of the points I made to myself. Like, what if that hadn't have wow. happened? Maybe we would have still been together. But no, you can't convince yourself not that because they would have found something else. They would have found something else to pick on because yeah. you are not Whatever the issue. Is it is in them, them. It will follow them everywhere. 
and it, it, it does make me sad you know because and it's pitiful if there's one way that i will say that i feel actively about my ex consistently is i pity them because i mm-hmm. remember saying to them how have you ever been in a relationship how's anyone ever been able to stand you and they told me that they never used to talk about their emotions with their previous exes and i'm like mm-hmm. if i was the first person to like really try and drag that out of you then you're going to just continue to stay with people who don't question your emotions your friends don't question your emotions because they're scared of you um they don't want to talk about their own either yeah probably and because that, that's like just a sad thing as well so that's going to eat away at you for the rest of your life and that's something that you are never going to run away from because the truth is it is so much harder to start change and to start to show change and go against the current than it is to run with it and if you are a sign of them having to show any kind of strength of change they don't want it yeah you could literally like you could die trying they're never going to change for you literally that took me so long to realize because again i was so determined not determined as enforcing myself into their life but i was very very sure that i wanted us to stay friends because i wanted to see them Mm -hmm. get better and so we had a break and then i tried being friends with them they didn't want it we spoke about getting back together they didn't want it i tried ignoring them they didn't want it every single thing that i tried just was never enough for them Mm. And it is, and what's really sad is that there was a there was a little spark of hope, and that is really where they get you in both the relationship and out of it. There was a yeah. spark of hope where I saw them start to get better, and I was like, Do you know what? I'm really proud of you. They completely relapsed, and it makes me sad. It, it's pitiful that it's like you are genuinely you don't see it yet, but you're ruining your life. And I've had people it, message yeah. me being like, "We're waiting for them to hit rock bottom," and it's like if I found out that my friends were saying to me that they were waiting for me to hit rock bottom, I don't know what I'd do. Is he not already there? Sadly not, because if, if you're rich and you're What's famous lower? and you have a platform, rock bottom takes a long time to go to because people will cling to mm. money and fame and you will find people who will yeah. cling to you for money and fame and you will find people who will not call you out on your actions in order for you to continue them and not have to take accountability. And you surround yourself with people who will not hold you accountable because then you don't have to be accountable. So rock bottom for these motherfuckers takes a long fucking time. One day though, one day again, yeah, they can avoid it. One day you'll just cross the wrong person who will just say your name. You will. And I didn't like, you know, and I, a lot of people have said to me, maybe one day in a few years, he'll realize what he did and he'll apologize to you. I don't even, I'm not, I don't even around for that. I'm also of the opinion. I saw a tic, uh, TikTok recently. I am on TikTok too much, but I saw a TikTok recently. I made a very good point and I agree with that. I almost reposted it. Um, I will never forgive this person. I do not believe that that means I'm holding on to anything or that I will not be able to be fully healed. I do not believe it is a requirement for moving forward. I have not forgiven people before and I have found peace. And I will never have forgiveness for this person. I tried very ever. hard to apologize. Like I, ve- I tried so hard to give them. And again, I said this in my Oh yeah, video. I certainly tried. I tried so fucking hard to the point that when they gave me this half-assed apology, I did go, it's okay. It's okay. No, I, I, I don't know if they know this, but I fully retracted that apology because like ha- you don't, <laughs> that, an apology like that, and the apology isn't words. The apology is the actions. Never do that to another fucking person again. And even then you still did that to me. And I will hold you accountable for that until the day you die like mm-hmm. on god but like you, you don't have to forgive you don't have to forget move on yes exactly and that's what mm-hmm. makes me mad that us talking about this type of thing like is, is again a fear of like oh you're so hung up on this you're so this that and the other again i can give a flying fuck about what my ex is up to right now because i know that they don't care why should that be a reason for yeah. me to not tell my story because you're scared and do you know why the people that say to you sorry i'm getting heated now and i'm getting fucking heated <laughs> now the people that will say to you yeah no i wouldn't say that if i were you i wouldn't take that to the internet if i were you are the same motherfuckers who are going to look bad when they get held accountable these are the same people that are relying on you not doing that in order to keep their careers going it's like because if if all of us were to talk everything would come crumbling down it's they true. don't want one of us to start because then everyone... we all will and i would love to see everyone speak out about their experiences. I would be so on all these girls' sides of so many stories I have heard. Like, and, and I know that oh. it's true. <laughs> it's almost laughable. Like, actually, like, it's almost laughable. Literally, me in my stream was laughing because it's, I have to laugh. You have it's to. so ridiculous. Some of the things <laughs> you say out loud. Yeah, and I, I just, I'm just so baffled at the fact that for so long I was like, okay, I won't talk about it because I don't want, once again, people to be like, because you know what's crazy, Shelby? I have a very core memory of us. Um, mm. We were in LA together, you know, the place where we got the photos, we played ski ball and it was really, really yeah, fun. Yeah, those are on my and fridge. That's on my wall, I'm looking at it right now. And, um, <laughs> wait, I'm going to let me get it. Oh no, I don't want to show the bar, it was out. Oh my God, um, then I divulge into horror. Okay, horror oh, oh my God. But um, oh, I just God, remember, we both, we both got a drink and we were just sat there looking at each other and like, I think, that this was off the back of some stuff happening to me. 
And we both, I said something and then you said something. And we both laughed. And we both just started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it so tears. literally we were both like haha isn't this really silly and we both just looked at each other and I just saw you cry and then I started crying and we were like I cry really oh. easily <laughs> you know too. why I cry the thing that hit me the most in my own stream was as soon as I started to talk about my friends I was like I, I can't hold it together anymore I cried like because, watching your stream. because I was going to take it I, was, I wasn't going to talk about my story I was just going to go quietly in the night and I fully believe and still fully believe karma will have its kiss for oh, yeah. everybody who does these things anyway. And they will eventually be their own downfall. I fully believe that. However, um, after talking to you and so many of my other friends and then having them share their experiences with me and you and other of my friends telling me how brave I am and how I've like sparked inspiration or just like this this feeling of ha like taking power back exactly um i couldn't not say my story after that exactly and if you're saying that can inspire other people to realize what happened to them and speak up and if also it helps speed run the people who did this into being f held fucking accountable if it takes us coming to the internet for you to realize that what you've done actually might be quite bad <gasps> cool how do you speed run it i have an opinion actually about something that Hot take. Have you ever seen creators, they get canceled, they did like actually horrid things. Like I'm legitimately talking about messing with kids level horrid things. And then they quietly come back into content creation and quietly start making things again. I believe if you are someone who truly is trying to convince anyone that you've changed after a horrible thing like that, you would never come back by your own choice. You would leave your own platform and never come back to a position of putting people in harm again. Because oh, that 000%. is what it is. You don't mean it if you come back. You didn't mean it. It was you just want money again and views, and you didn't mean it. Oh, she ate with that one, Your Honor. Because <laughs> like the oh, example ate. I can think of, like Jenna Marbles took herself away, oh. and I don't even think she should have. I want her back. But Bring she her felt back. so. She felt so deeply about how she had done some wrong to communities that she was like, I don't ever want to put myself in a position of doing harm like this to people again. I will leave. And if they come back, you didn't mean it. But this is why people stay silent and it's why people stay complicit because they know that if someone else is done, then they're done soon after for being so closely acquainted. Because the question then comes, once like the dust has settled, when people get exposed and once the dust is settled, it becomes a, the moving finger moves. Why the fuck did you stay around for so long then? And it's like, yeah, why did you? Yeah, how about that? Because how about I will this time, always this time, hate this time? the why'd you wait so long? Oh, it's the um, dumbest fucking argument. As in, I wish that we you, we could explain how long it took for both of us. Until if Rihanna is still in the chat, Rihanna could literally vouch. Even Shelby can vouch. Anyone who knows me in the chat can vouch. Four months after shit happened with me, I was still going, but I still care for them. I still want them to do well. As you know, it's not it wasn't that bad. For months and months and months and months and months. Mm -mm 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 -mm. None of that. And you should be so happy. You should feel so gassed that you chose people like us who are not going to sit there and try and completely destroy your career and name you. Oh, you got a alarm <laughs> going. They have to move <laughs> like, my car now. <laughs> like, I don't oh, know no. how long you want to stream for him. I just have to quickly move my car. I'll give you, I'll give you, don't worry. Go, go, go move your car. I have to go outside and not even change. <laughs> oh, no. Got the Hello right, Kitty yeah, pajamas cleaning. on. All right. You, you... Be you right back. Good. Missing you already. You jump too many. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you come back. Oh no. <laughs> guys, I'm being left. I'm being left on my own, guys. I'm being <laughs> Oh no. Um But like these people should feel so fucking happy that they've gone for people who who don't who oh sorry, I've completely lost my train of thought. They should be so happy that they've gone for people like us who who aren't gonna sit and make kick up a fuss about them. Because they should be happy that we're kicking up a fuss about generally raising awareness. Oh, Amy and Gucky. Amy and Gucky have heard me give every excuse under the sun. Amy and Gucky have heard me recount stories and then go, but I do want to make them look bad. It's crazy. But they should feel so glad that we are sat here right now going, we want to raise awareness to actual, like the general story of abuse. And for all I know, they could be fucking watching right now to be so for real. Um, and obviously I can only like, you know, I'm talking about my experiences, but one day these people will just go for the wrong person. They should be, they should be so, you should be so happy that I'm not sat here right now dropping your address. Not that I would ever dock someone, that is a joke. That's a joke, that's a joke, that's a joke. But how are we doing chat? Sorry, <laughs> it's easier to excuse yourself because it hurts to realize that there was no excuse. That is the hardest part to allow yourself to, to realize 
The fact there are so many creators in here being so amazing, like genuinely does speak for itself. And I'm so glad that like I have, have people like that who are around me because for a long time I was very much stuck around the, for a giggle I should. Oh my God, imagine, imagine I'm just like, no, I can't even make, I'm not even gonna make that joke. Um, yeah, it's just like, uh, but both both Shelby and I are very big believers in karma, but I think we both reached a point where there have been so many conversations that have led to this point between each other, between other people who have gone through the exact same thing and aren't quite ready yet to share their story. And it's a thing of like, silence is, compl is being complicit. It really, truly is. And to the people who are watching this, because I know, I know that when I release my video, people were like, oh, drama, or people were watching it to see what was said to know, like that kind of thing. If you're watching this and you know that you are one of the people who has been complicit, who let me suffer for longer than I should have and has not been uh, holding people accountable. It took me a long time because I don't like the concept of people, you know, not liking me. I don't want to ruin friendships. I don't want to, you know, make a fuss or cause a scene because there is a, within the social media industry, there is a kind of like precedent of just kind of suffering in silence and just going about our day and staying quiet. And the anxiety of talking about any of this, now that I'm here, I feel fine, but I know the second I end this stream, I'm going to be like, fuck. Why did I say half of that? And the reason I'm anxious about saying half of that is because I know a large majority of the people that I'm friends with have been silent and complicit and are gonna watch this and think I'm calling them out. And if you're one of those people where you're sat there going, is she talking about me right now? If that's a thought that's going through your head and if the shoe fits, you were a part of the problem. That was such a long time where I was genuinely sat there questioning if I was the issue, if what happened to me actually fucking happened. And just because it was your mates, does not mean it did not happen. And that makes me so fucking mad that for so long I had people telling me, nah, it's just a normal breakup. Oh, this, that, and the other. Defending because it was their mate. Where's this energy for? Because God knows there are other big content creators who have faced allegations, who have like, you know, got massive momentum behind them. But the second it's your mate, it's radio silence. Let's think about that. Let's talk about that just for a second. And I would also like to say a big thank you to the creators who weren't even necessarily friends with me, but I know there are a few people who have never said this explicitly to me, but that I know after watching my video and seeing what happened took a step away from the person who hurt me and stuff like that, again, I still feel guilty for because I'm like, fuck, this person thinks I'm ruining their life when all I did was share my story. But I am very, very grateful for it. Anytime somebody messages me and is like, yeah, I've stopped interacting with this person because I just don't agree. That really, really touches me and I really do appreciate it because that was never my intention. I never made the video thinking, ha ha ha, going to ruin lives, but knowing that people care enough about who they surround themselves with. And again, it just reiterates the point of if a single person watches this and if a single person watches stuff like, you know, my YouTube video, can any one of my mods, like I, I have a video that kind of explains my entire story in a way that's a bit more logical and thought out. But for so, so many people just think that they have to silently get over it and, and deal with things. And that's just not the case at all. Not saying that you have to, if you go through something like this, you have to yell it from the, the rooftops and that you have to do this. But if, but feeling like you can talk to people, there you go. If anybody wants to watch it, not, that's not me being, every time I share that video, I'm still like, God, I hope people don't think I'm like trying to scrounge for views. If you want like that, that's a bit more articulate, it's still an hour long because I tried to do an articulate version and it still turned out an hour long. But um, my big issue now is that again, I think I've faced a lot of the, the struggle of being in a relationship of that nature. And my big things now are kind of dealing with the long-term issues, the anxiety, the panic, the the self like perception I have. And also realizing now that there are so many people that I thought had my back that were really only truly acting from a place of self-preservation who will be an activist and will be supportive when they can, like when it benefits them and when it makes them look good. And I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. And again, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to talk up. I was going to speak up about it because again, these are people that I know in real life and they're going to think I'm calling them out. But why the fuck? Yeah, CC, it just means I have a 100% failure, failure rate when it comes to relationships. <laughs> Which is the most me thing ever to be so for real. Only I would not be in a relationship for 20 years just to like really fuck it up on my first try. But <laughs> If you claim to support abuse victims, yet shit your pants, the thought of condemning a friend of yours who's an abuser, you don't support victims. Oh, Maddie, that was so based and true from you. And especially don't uh, act like you're supportive of one person when the call's coming from inside the house. Literally. Who are ruining their career by talking? They're ruining their career by... Yeah, and that's like a long... Like one thing that took a very, very long time for me to realize was that if you don't want to be known as a shitty person, don't do shitty things. 
if you don't want to be known as a bad person, don't do things that if they're told online make you look bad. And don't get me wrong, again, with content creation, there is a level of things being told online and things being told offline, right? And there are things that happen in my real life that I wouldn't bring to the internet, you know? But um, if it's something like this, I feel I could actually make a change and actually, you know. Like, yeah, what, how is it so difficult to not, just not, you know? Don't do things you could get jail time for. It's as easy as I say, honestly. Too many three years to cover from my ex. And here's the thing, again, it's a point that I always, always really, really, really want to re reiterate to anybody who is going through something like this, to anybody who knows anybody that's going through this. The recovery of it is not linear. And I know for a long time, some of my friends were sick to the back teeth of me because I came up with excuses upon excuses. I went back time and time again. I cried time and time again. It took me so, it's so long for me to get into my head. And like I said, I still have days where I wake up and have a panic attack. I still have days where I don't want to leave the house. I still have days where I see someone in the distance that looks like them and I feel like I'm going to throw up all the fucking time. Uh, but I like, I've made so much progress and the only progress now can really come with time and further therapy. But I just want to know that if you're going through something like this or anything of the sort, I'm so proud of you. And like, you just need time and the energy to recover and to surround yourself with people who are actually supportive of your recovery as well. Because again, 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 I genuinely don't know what I would have done after, like if it wasn't for people like Scott, Amy, Shelby, I would have gone insane, genuinely. Cause that's like, I was so convinced that I was the drama. I'm, I'm just so ridiculously proud of every single one of you. Um, and I really hope, again, I keep repeating my points, that if even one of you hear this and you're like, wow, this is something that happened to me, that will make me happy because we don't need to just sit and, you know, I say the word bitch colloquially. We have no reason to just sit and just say stuff. You know, we're kind of, we're, we're, we're healing the best we can. We're saying this in hopes that it will help people because we're passionate about bringing awareness to it. <sighs> it's about supporting victims. Yeah, I'm just going to say it. In regards to like Shelby's story as well, there's a whole lot of radio silence from a lot of people. And it does lead the question of why? Why are you being so quiet, huh? Yeah, I, I'm very, very grateful for all the love today as well. I'm very like, sorry, I, I know that I don't normally like like do this this kind of kind of stuff. Sorry. Oh, did I say something a little bit too too close to the sun? Go a little bit too close to the sun. What can I say? I'm bored of it. Um but I'm like, I, I'm genuinely very glad that I think Shelby may have parked her car in a, like a different state. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, but I am very thankful for the people uh, here that are being so lovely. I think it, it she's driving it. She's on a plane. She's on a plane to Brighton. Um, yeah, I think things speak for themselves, you know? And again, this isn't me saying that every single content creator has to speak up on every single issue like this, but um, I just think it, it sometimes it just does speak for speak for in the getaway car. <laughs> Shout out to my Swifties. Um, similar in friendships too. You leave the group slash person and keep doubting yourself if they ever damage you, but they did. It is. It it just it genuinely just does take a long, long time. I, I just really also want you guys to be kind to yourselves as well. In any regard. Again, this now is no longer specific to things like abusive relationships. If you're going through anything right now, a friendship breakup, because this kind of abuse isn't just romantic. You can have like this stuff in friendships and in, in families and stuff like that please always be kind to yourself as well because i spent a long 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 time beating myself up i spent a very long time being like why the fuck didn't i save myself even when i did my video i was like i cried because i was so mad at myself for not getting myself out and not realizing sooner and for not listening to people and for being so fucking dumb i was so mad at myself for being so dumb and naive and unaware and you just can't do that because if you were aware, none of it would have happened. They prey on you being unaware and falling for what they say and for being complicit with their actions. She's just so opening. Don't think both of us. That really that means so much. Thank you so much. I'm so I, I'm not I'm trying not to read chat too much because like I, I get really bad brain fog. Shout out to the trauma for that one. But um, yeah, they're relying on ignorance. And they're relying on your silence. And it's something that Shelby actually helped me realize. And, and Rihanna, when I said, I was like, for so long, I was made to feel that like saying anything is me being crazy. Like if I, if I speak about an ex, so, you know, I have a podcast, this isn't me promoting, I have a podcast. And I used to think that, you know, everybody does it. Everybody talks about an ex relationship. You play a drinking game and it's a question about your ex or something. I used to panic because any degree of talking about an ex, talking about anything, I used to think that if I said anything, I was crazy. 
and that I was obsessive because that was how I was made to feel. That's why I was told. And not the, not the explanation of my podcast, not the time. Um, I was just genuinely made to feel that like I was crazy. And it wasn't until I think it was Shelby that said it. They were like, you do realize that they were probably just telling you that so that you were too scared to say anything and call them out for their behavior, right? Which is almost even scarier because it shows that they have a level of awareness that they're doing something in order to try and cover their tracks like that. And you know, to, and it does scare me. And one of the reasons why I was like, I need to go to therapy straight away. And it's something I said earlier was that I refuse to let this one person completely destroy my, percep my perception of relationships today. Oh my God, you are amazing for that one, Lana. Um, and it's scary because there is, there are some things that I'm never gonna be able to like go through, you know? Like, I don't think I'm going to be in a relationship for a long time because it is just, I just think I'm going to struggle to get emotionally close to someone to that degree again. And it's going to take a while because I was so used to certain things I say resulting in arguments, always being overly apologetic, you know, being scared to do certain things, like all sorts, asking, f like like seeking the validation from of someone that I'm scared of how that's going to manifest itself in future relationships. But all I can do is like focus on myself and it's something I've been doing for a long time. And just to loop again back to the point of of like support and like healing not always being linear and just to be kind to yourself. So kind to yourself. Oh, you look where was your car? Freaking yeah. Canada? I had to, it's hard to find a parking spot in the middle of the day sometimes. I, find, I have I to actually it move it again in two hours. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you have a driveway? Yeah, no, no driveway. Do you want to get you a driveway for your birthday? It's Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Street parking. Usually it's not a problem. And I just have to move my car every Monday and Tuesday if it's on the wrong side of the street. Oh. Sometimes I'm doing like a back and forth, but then I'm good for a week. And it's not hard to find a spot. It just takes like a minute. Oh, you're just so strong and sexy and independent <gasps> that you're just driving around that day. <laughs> I was just talking yeah. about, you probably heard me. I was just talking about like scared of the implications it will have on future relationships and stuff. Ooh, yeah, I'm not even thinking about the future guy. Good luck to him. No, I'm literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but genuinely, like, you again, trauma. this is going to sound really like like a really twisted silver lining because I'm a very big believer in having no regrets, right? No regrets. And um, yes, I still there isn't a point exactly in like dwelling on what you could have done different. Exactly, because you couldn't. There's no point you can't change the past. However, like, part of me is like, I still went through all that. You just have to find the silver lining. And I have never had as much respect for myself um, had yes. such good friends around me and been yes. so, yes, you know what I mean? If it hadn't have been yeah. for that. And that's not me by any degree thanking them for that. Fuck you still, no. well and truly. However- I could have had that without all of the yeah, trauma and all I, I truly learned the hard way. However, like coming mm -hmm. from this and like feeling what truly hit like a rock bottom in many different aspects and to bounce mm -hmm. back from it and to truly feel the most secure in myself. Because another thing with these people is that they make yeah. you feel like you rely on them. They make them feel like you're nothing without them. Yeah. I, I would get told- Which is crazy because he brought nothing to the table. Exactly. Like I, I would get told, oh, you were only ever happy if I was with you. As if they could see me at all times, by the way. They'd be like, yeah. you were only happy if you were with me or if I was with you. Sorry, they did you install you cameras? Them. Did you install cameras? Um, that, <laughs> that when they then leave, you feel you like you're- You'd possibly be happy without them. You're right. You feel like you're having to start from like square one again. And then mm -hmm. maybe that's a, maybe, you know, like building yourself up from the ground again with just you there is like the best thing that can happen to you. But, you know, I, it's like rewriting so many things, rewriting experiences, rewriting feelings, rewriting your, your norms and like having conversations mm -hmm. with people. Do you know what it is for me? I'll say something and I'll be like, oh shoot, that's going to start an argument. And then it doesn't. And I'm like, oh, that's not supposed to start an argument. Crazy that. But I feel yeah. like ours, ours, ours were different in that regards. Mine was very like, um, yeah, our experiences were still were different for each other in in some regards yeah. to the like to the traits of them. But yeah, they tend to make you feel like you need them even when they give you nothing. Oh my god, like actually so true. Like literally, literally nothing. <sighs> oh my god, we've been up two hours, Shelby. Have it been two? Oh. Have you got any it's points? Because I could keep going. No, yeah, that's the thing. That's why I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, oh fuck. Is there any? Are there wanna, any like... Um, no, just like off of what you said, but I, I agree. I have not felt as like confident and happy with my. I'm so proud of the person that I am now, because mm. I have grown. I feel like I am. I'm all the things that I would hope I would be as my best self. I'm trying to live her, and be her. 
uh, and I feel so close and so happy with my friendships. I have such good people around me. I couldn't ask for anything more. Oh, I love that. And then we'll find love. That will fit in like a perfect puzzle piece. Focus on your own garden. And then if a bee comes along, like, because bees love beautiful yep. gardens, but even if not, you still have a pretty garden. And you know another fucking yes. thing, right? You know another I thing? Like when I was in this relationship, I really <laughs> thought, I not only did I think I was ugly, but I also thought I wasn't funny. Yeah. I thought I was annoying. Yes. I was so that quiet. Hurt. Bro, hurt. do you know how fucking funny I am, Shelby? Do you know how funny I am? You're so much funnier. Give me a jackbox right now. I'm so fucking funny. <laughs> That was literally, especially after the don't think women are funny comment. I was like, oh, this is like funny. relearning yourself was, and being like, oh, I'm actually quite likable. I think I got so quiet. I think I really did become a different person. I lost so much of myself that I felt like was me. I God, lost, I hated myself. I just didn't even try to be funny anymore. I just existed to try and get by quietly. Yes. I, I was like not even trying to say words anymore at all. The amount of people I met during that time that were like, oh, you were very like demure or this or that or very quiet when i met you you're nothing like this and mm. i'm like oh yeah i'm never gonna say why but i was like oh yeah just had some stuff going on <laughs> yeah. fine we'll do a jackpot and stream and for... just show how funny we are <laughs> i was quiet for a long time after too like just in general like i just i didn't even have that spark come back in me for a really long time and you know what what's so sad as well and this might sound a bit pessimistic of me is that i'm never going to be the same person that i was before I, no, I think it's actually it's a good thing because I do think that we're stronger, and I actually think that I will never fall for this again. Yeah, I, I when I look at um, I saw my old roommate the other day, and we were in London, which is where I used to live, and we were just hanging out and talking, and I kind of cried on the way home because I do really mourn the person that I was before I was with this person, mm-hmm. and in the beginning, I really, really yeah. should we do an all woman Jackbox just to say. <laughs> Imagine actually for real no, actually yeah, for real, you still Rihanna and <laughs> I, you are literally the funniest people I know are so many of my female friends just gonna put cum as every answer anyway sorry um <laughs> it's like I um like I, I really do mourn the person that I was back then mm-hmm. because I was so confident and I was so like secure in myself and knowing that that completely got stripped away and that I'm never gonna be that person again which is a very sad truth yeah. because now I've you know cringe out of the ashes type moment I'm I'm better for it but knowing that I'm never going to be that naive and and yes, willing to love the way good. I was then which is a good thing but also like it's, it's like, like gr- grieving the person that I was and that I'm never going to be that person again fucking sucks yeah yeah and that oh that I just keep thinking that's your first experience and I think of me back then it was my first experience and it's I really actually would love to write a book about all of the experiences I've had I have so many stories I have still yet to tell of so many weirdos, some of them in content creation. I would like just go on dates here and there with people and immediately find out they're weirdos. Yeah, I I haven't gone on a single date since and I never will, which is so crazy Mm. because- Never uh, will. No, they have I, to come to me. The the universe has to put it in front of my fucking face. You think I'm outside. running after people? No thanks. They can they can trusting you know. a man again. I, no. I'm focusing on myself. Then everything else that finds me is supposed to find. I do not chase. I attract yes. with shovel. Yes. I do not chase. That's, I attract. <laughs> that's what me and Joey are always quoting. We don't chase. We attract. Do you know how fucking mad I am? Like I've never met Joey. <laughs> like on a real one. Sick and what twisted. A wild. <laughs> Sick and twisted. Get 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 Joey into Jackbox, girlies. <laughs> We'll bring him back. I'll bring him back to London. Do you know what? I do always make the joke and Scott always makes a joke as well that if I become like really truly irrelevant, I will just write a book exposing everybody. I am going to write a book of all of, because I do think it, I, I, do, I do think it's so important as women and just people in general who go through these experiences of being abused and they often will feel like they do need to keep quiet or they don't even understand what happened to them at all. And just the batshit wild insane things people will say out loud to you when mm. you're their intimate partner. It's like, you never understand someone until you've been their partner. You get in, like you you get let in. Mega sick and twisted. Like I, I said this to you in a voice note yesterday where obviously I said names and stuff. I was with somebody who would literally be like, oh, this person hasn't followed me back, but it's okay because if I mention them, I get followers. Like these I narcissists are truly <laughs> operated only by gain and money and wealth and having control over people. <sighs> Ooga booga, just- ooga booga. Freaks. I'm gonna do a, a TikTok with a couple of my friends, which is like the trend of you say all the things that you stayed through and you laugh <laughs> and drink. Oh, and no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna using all of the X's of my whole entire life because there's some actual insane things I could say out loud. Oh. I've already said a lot of stories of things. That um, I've yeah, I'm getting. But I'm holding on to the really. 
But I have, I've had a lot of experiences of dating people for like a few weeks at a time before I'm like, no, this uh, is definitely not going to work out. Yes, yeah, so that's unfortunately I've encountered a lot of people. I think another thing as well is a fear of like when I first met this person, they were like very perfect for me. Um, nearly called out the person that set me up with them by accident, nearly out of, the, out of <laughs> habit then. Um, <laughs> they were, I generally thought they were perfect and I thought they were so lovely. And I was like, this is someone that will never hurt me. And I like I'm really put so gaze, much, Sorry. I put girls, in, oh, girls and gays. Um, and girls and gays, get gotten here. <laughs> and um, I was like, this person's perfect. They would never, they would never hurt me in that way. But I genuinely do have a fear of, even if I do find me, find someone who is genuinely nice, I'm still going to be sat there like, when are they going to like switch up on me then? When's this going to happen? Which is sad. <laughs> but hey ho, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'll be fun and sexy and single until then, because I don't need to be in a we relationship so to uh, feel support. No, you, no, you're so fun and sexy. This is actually important. You said a very important thing. We do not need no. them. And it, it should that shouldn't even make anybody upset because none of us should need. It's a choice, and it's a choice in love to to take on life together as a team, as a partnership. And I lost my thought. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. <laughs> I, they, they shouldn't they shouldn't complete you. They should like yes. Add it's like you're going on your you. own journeys next to each other. You you add you complement each, each other. other's lives better and easier. Yeah, it should be easy. Oh my god. Okay, big big point. Again, I'm talking as somebody who has only been in one relationship, so I don't really know this. So probably Shelby can ho hopefully back me on this. It should be easy. I, again, I reiterate the point that like I never had a honeymoon phase when I was in this relationship. Just what I became like, oh, just my boundaries did, became <laughs> like more and more like conformed to what I was used to. Um, but from mm. the one thing that I've learned is that it, it should be so easy. It should never be difficult to love someone, and it shouldn't be difficult to support someone. I don't know about you, but when I love someone, I I don't have the uh, the impulse to insult them or to make their life hell or to try and ruin their life. You know, like I, that's just not something that should happen. So better relationship advice than i've ever gotten in my life we're just what can i say we're pros at that <laughs> me and I, all my relationships i'm really a believer in girls girls sharing their stories especially because especially like intimate things and not even because of being abused but just sharing things because who's who's talking about these things with each other how are we supposed to know, you know what's what supposed I to be mean? going on I, I was saying a little bit in a, in a room with people literally and i was I, I say literally one more time challenge um I was saying when I end stream, I'm like, how long is it going to take me before I start panicking and being like, I said too much. But I'm like, do you know the only people that are going to make me feel bad for saying too much? I'll give you three guesses. It'll be the people who are like, <laughs> you want me to name names? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, oh, I'll say less. But um, yeah, I think that's another thing I need to get used to as well is that I start panicking about like after I posted my video, I was like, should I have done that? Should I have done that? Have I messed up? Have I, you know, this, that and the other? Yeah, there's so much I was like, should I not have said that? And should I have said more about that? And and knowing that, that like there are people but... that have going to come in here and watched and like not said anything because they just want to know what we're saying and if it's anything that throws them under the bus. Mm -hmm. You know what? I wish I was messier. Oh my God. Do you know what? I wish so much that I was a messy bitch that didn't care. Imagine, imagine how and differently this stream could have gone. Imagine. Yeah, that's just like never been my game, but I do kind of wish I was that kind of person. I just am not. But it's not for them. Like it's not for, and, and that's not a kindness to no, them. It it's a kindness them. to ourselves. No, we're we're just boss ass bitches and are better than that. There is genuinely no like, there's realistically no pro to like naming people besides them being held accountable by by the internet. You know, like there's there's more con. I meant it when I said I think these people are dangerous. They're, they're, uh, where is the line that they're not willing to cross? We literally don't know. Because it's also Both playing upon a power dynamic. Bit. Yeah. It's not right. Mm. Ugh. This is my, like, I have that, that they talk about uh, neurodivergent people have sometimes is like that inner really strong sense of justice. I'm very upset when I think that something's not fair or not right. Yes. Um, That's like a, it's a, po a popular thing that all my friends know. If I have a little bit too much to drink, <laughs> I often cry. Because I am genuinely deeply saddened by the state of the world. I always cry when I'm drunk. I just, I'm, I'm a Pisces, guys. What could I say? Oh my God, it's my birthday in like oh, five I'm days. I'm a Pisces rising. Oh, makes so much sense. <laughs> oh my God. But um, I used to cry at everything and that I was something to... that was used against me so often. I used to happy oh, cry God. and then be told am... like, you cry so much. You were happy crying? Yeah. It's <gasps> evil. Well, oh my God. Okay. We've actually gone for two hours. That's actually kind of...
<laughs> yeah, is it is it enough? Watch us go live and like we'll give it ten minutes and we'll be like, actually, I'm not done yet. I'm, I'm done fully excited both to call each other still after. And oh keep yeah, talking. The fact that I'm gonna hang up on on this call, rejoin after, and be like, okay, deleting VOD. I'm scared. Use names. <laughs> now I can use names. Yeah. Oh. But um, um, and I did delete my VOD, but that isn't because I want to hide my story. I just also don't want it to follow me forever yeah that um, what made me so sad when i after i did my video if you search my name into youtube it was the first thing that came up and i was like there is no way i i have made so much content over four years just for that to be my top result fuck shit yeah and you know what we are this is not um the most important thing about us and if that is for other people they're not the people that we care about yeah but we are so much more than just the things that happened to us the worst thing that happened to us the people that treated us the worst <sighs> And I will not be remembered for these pieces of shit. That's oh, God. for sure. And don't get me wrong, we will continue to advocate for it because again, we're yes, talking about this feels things. So important. We're talking about it not for us to well, I guess it is also free therapy for us in a way, but we're not doing it to like try and bring hell upon our exes and to ruin lives. The amount of people that I've seen in chat go, I like appreciate you saying this is why we're doing it. And that's always been the reason. If my only reason was to try and ruin lives, I wouldn't have done it. But I'm saying no, it to help people. No, this is what I want. I want to see people actually stand up for what's right, even if they're not the victim. Yeah. So you I, see something wrong happening. You see your friend doing something completely out of line. Do something about it. Say fucking anything about oh it. Oh my God, yes. Stop letting it slide. Yes, Jesus for the love of God. Because we could have such a good circle of people if if all of us were just on a, in agreement, let's just cut out these pieces of shit. We're seeing, we see the things that they're willing to do to other people. And we're like, okay, that's cool though. And also, if you're gonna uh, not do that, at least don't message the other person when they come out with their story saying, really sorry that happened to you, huh? How about that? Just saying. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, someone just followed me called Shiny Sherlock and that's a K-pop reference. And I want you to know the person just followed me. I adore you. Um, I totally had a point as well and that I've forgotten what it is. But um, <laughs> fuck, sorry, I'm just, all I can hear is this song now, fuck. Um, I do think we have so much power. Everybody remember that, you have so we much do. power. Yeah, you're more, than, you're more than what happened to you. But then also if you're, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, when I was saying about like, I never saw a TikTok or anything that supported me. Like if I'd have seen this, I generally feel like if I'd watched a stream like this when I was in the situation, it would have really spelled it out for me what I was going through. But I didn't because mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't see any resources. And it, again, I remember being told by the therapist, this sounds like, narcissistic abuse and googling what narcissistic abuse was and going like i can't explain the feeling that i felt when i googled it when i got oh, home yeah. it was like a weight the weight off my shoulders the shackles that came off of me you know that getty image thing where it's like the the sunset and the silhouette of the person with the shackles that was so me in that moment <laughs> like and if that can if Free. we can give even a fraction of that feeling to somebody else and for them to feel um like uh, validated by what we're saying and to oh go God, because yeah. you do when you're in it i genuinely just can't ex even explain to you how crazy you feel the amount of times that i was in tears and my roommate would come in because she'd hear me crying and i'd be like i don't know what i've done like please can you tell me what i've done wrong i don't know what to do i don't know how to fix this i don't know how it started i don't know how it's going to end i'd be sat there begging the person i was with saying what do you want me to do and they'd be saying i don't know and they just keep going and just keep going at me. And they, they, there was never an out, there was never an ending. There was never an outcome because there was never an issue in the first place. They just wanted to create that environment. Yeah, and because they feel powerful in that environment, that's where they are getting their power from. Exactly. So I like, so I never w came across resources like this. Like I, I don't know if I can call this stream a resource, but I never saw I mean, anybody that was going through the same thing. Because also, this isn't shit that someone should go through. And in my video, I say when you grow up, you learn to like look both ways when you cross the road, and you learn to like put on your seatbelt before you drive, and all that kind of shit. You don't really learn, do yeah, you don't learn how to d deal with something like this or the signs to look out for because it shouldn't be something you ever have to learn to look out for oh hot take i think often we're not told about this stuff by people so that they it can happen to us later Ooh. it's not about men Ooh. but why are we right like i do think it's a deep issue with the way that we're each raised men and women yeah but um that's where that goes back to it is disgustingly common like yeah literally like, like you just said it's so more common so much more common than people yeah, realize we're taught to be submissive and to be led by men and like hot take also women are way better leaders you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, I do think it's funny that all of the, the stereotypes about men is supposedly like they're the better leaders. They're not emotional. They, and it's, women are more the people who lead and like take charge in the household and give tasks out to the people that need to be told what to do and are so much more emotionally intelligent often because we do know how to take the emotions we're feeling like 
address them, not avoid them. Yeah. And move forward with them. And it's scary because also with these people and with narcissists as well, there is a like, they, they struggle with processing emotions. And I used to get told by my ex, there ain't no way the feet people managed to find this stream. Motherfucker went, this is a stream talking about abuse, but I still want to see your dogs. And you know what? I kind of respect <laughs> that. But um, but my I, I was with somebody who would often say to me, I don't get, because no matter like what range of emotion I was, obviously you can be upset, you can be disgruntled, you can be angry, you can be frustrated. There's a whole spectrum of that side of emotions. And I'd always get told, you're so angry. You're so angry. Even if I showed a slight disagreement or if I was slightly oh. disgruntled, I would be told, you're so angry. And I remember calling them out on it and being like, I'm not angry, I'm just annoyed. And they said to me, I don't get annoyed, I just get angry. And for these people and for people who are narcissists, they have no control of their emotions and no like And I think it's comprehension of it. also to continue not knowing how to handle emotion. Like they're like, I'm just not the kind of guy that talks about feelings and then think that's okay to stay that way. Yeah, it's just the it's like, like- That's just how I am. Don't like talking about how I feel. That's unacceptable. You cannot be in a relationship if that's the way you are. It's right. literally not an option. You can't date people without talking about how you feel. But lo and behold, they're the motherfuckers that never stop dating. <laughs> Am I right or am I right? Lure people in. You just got to find the next person to like your next emotional punching bag. You know what I mean? And that's what we're trying to keep. We're trying to help people not become those people. Be stronger. Yeah, you're so much stronger. Obviously, this is so much easier said than done. Um, and again, if you're like, if you, if you if you watch this stream and you're like, wow, this still relates to a lot of things that is happening to me, but I love this person. Sometimes it does take a long fucking time to to get out it takes a long time to gather the courage it takes a lot of long time to truly realize what's happening to you because you can you again don't worry about how long exactly and you can hear stuff like this and be like this is what's happening to me oh but it's not exactly like that but it takes a long time but that loops back again to just be kind to yourself and truly truly surround yourself mm -hmm. with people who care for you and like get out you know and mm -hmm. it's way easier said than done, but believe in all of you and I'm sending everybody all my love. Communication, yes. I think you know in your gut, and again, when we were saying that we felt sick and stuff, you know in your gut when you're not being treated right. And no one who loves you would yeah, ever treat you in that right. way. And again, towards the end, I started getting such word vomit where I was just kept going to be like, I type out the message and then I delete it because I didn't want to give up mm -hmm. on them. And I realized now that that was just my body being like, oh my God, Alexi, get the fuck out. And I didn't. Yeah literally <sighs> they weren't safe situations our body was telling us that bruv it wasn't a safe place that's not okay and also please be kind to yourself if when you get out of it you do keep going back again i eight months after my breakup i went back to them several times and tried to be friends and tried to be on good terms followed them but had them muted for ages eventually ended up completely unfollowing each other they unfollowed mm -hmm. me then refollowed me then muted me then unfollowed me like it there's this there's this whole thing but i'm kind of glad that they decided for me that we would be no contact by just simply never speaking to me again yeah, and just... i would have responded it absolutely should not have been in my hands to reach out to them first after everything so that's why i wouldn't have ever but then just that meant we never spoke again and i'm actually so glad it was the cleanest break and like straight up no contact i can probably keep the, that kind, so probably the kindest now. thing they ever did mm -hmm. um but my big, I think, I think our big main points are obviously being aware of the signs of what we went through. And then also just the big old point of if you're in the industry and you know somebody who is like this, to hold them the fuck accountable. Because again, I was very prepared after my stuff ended to be like, this person's still gonna have a platform. People are still gonna collaborate with them. People are still gonna mention them on streams. Yeah. People are still gonna do this, this and this. But now I'm realizing the longer it goes, I'm like, why the fuck should I have been prepared for that? Why should people who know what they've done continue to platform them? Oh yeah, and we just have to be comfortable. Yeah, I just have to be like prepared for that and stuff. But so also to any of the creators that are watching and that's what's so sad because all the creators that are watching are the ones that actually care and are serious and genuine. But um, if you know somebody that is doing this action, you better be at the bare minimum holding them accountable. Because you, yeah. you don't, you don't. Like there is, there is no change without accountability. And hey ho, maybe next time they won't be so lucky. so brave. And ah. they are so weak. Yeah, I, I just genuinely pity them, like, to a outrageous degree. It's just sad, really, that you had to hurt somebody else because you were so hurt yourself. Hurt people hurt people. <laughs> no, because also, though, I've been hurt and I didn't do that shit, so. Mm, yeah, that's actually very true. Oh, I actually, was so fucking true. Wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't hurt anybody. Wait a minute. That's so fucking true. 
It's the way that I could never cause physical harm ever no. with intention. Oh my God. At no point when any of the stuff that was happening Couldn't to me happened, me. did I think, hey, I'm going to just do this and that. But again, there is there is a fine line of reactive abuse and to also be kind to yourself. If you get driven to a point where you do find yourself yelling back, that like there research reactive abuse as well because i sat there for a while i said a bit earlier where i was like oh god what would they say that i did and i know there were a couple of times where i like lashed out back obviously didn't do anything crazy but like yelled back and probably dropped a dropped a few curse words um <laughs> that they might be like this was abuse it was not it was me reacting to what they were doing but yeah yeah if you if you're and if you're in a situation where you feel like you're going to inflict pain on someone because of your actions please go to fucking therapy don't get yeah, yourself into another an relationship. Just unacceptable line to cross. People hurt people, but not always. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the thing. Um, yeah. Well, God, we've, we've, we yapped. Well, oh, how we yapped. I think this was really good. This was good. I, I, I enjoyed when, when we started, I was like, shit, there are so many points I want to make, but I don't know where to start. I don't know where to go. I think we were both also tentative in saying certain things because, again... Yeah, we're talking through nerves. Yeah. Too. And again, for me, a big part of mine is that when it's when it links so closely to the content creator space and there are like and everybody fucking knows who I'm talking about besides the people who are fans. I know there are more people too that that, that people know are doing bad things and just they're letting it be quiet until someone decides to make it public. But they know about it and are still willing to be friends with them until it's a public thing. And I just don't think that's genuine. Oh, that's true. And you know what? That's on self preservation. That's yeah, on self-preservation. If it takes you having to do it to look good online to show support and be active in in backing someone and validating them, you're a shitty person. If you're aware and you're continuing to feed into it, you're a shitty person. And I, again, have held so back in saying that because I know that that's me indirect, indirectly calling out a lot of my friends. Like I know that I've called out a lot of people in saying that statement. We're expecting better. If the shoe fits. If the shoe fucking fits. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's just business. I don't agree. If that's the if that's how they feel about it, I don't agree. Yeah, business isn't actively giving someone a platform. You know what I mean? That's the that's the the joy of being self-employed and for doing social media. You run the you run the shots, you call the shots, you decide who's in your content, you decide who you give a platform to. And if you are choosing to give it to an abuser, that is on you. And I don't know what to say yeah, to you knowingly. anymore. I can't continue to excuse it. Yeah. But I digress. <laughs> I think we have done a lot we've of done our, We've by, done our piece. I think that this is the beginning of, I hope, more people sticking up for themselves. Even if not publicly about all these people that are bad people. Mm. But in private, like, just don't tolerate this kind of behavior. It, it's not normal. Don't let them make you feel like it's normal and it's okay. Yeah. And this won't be the last time that we talk about this kind of stuff. I do want to consistently, well, we do want to consistently bring awareness to this and do things yeah. for it. And I'd love to do some charity streams for different like um yes. charities and stuff as well. It, it's just something that I, I'm so passionate about now. Um, yeah, I said I wasn't sure when I would like, I would maybe one day tell, talk more and then <laughs> a few days went by and I did want to talk more. But yeah. it is mainly about the issue of abuse. I feel so strongly about this too. You wonder how small the creative space would be without all those shit people? Oh, you'd be surprised. And that's what I'm going to say That's why that. I feel <laughs> sad that I said even at the beginning, it, it feels like being a good person isn't enough here. And I, I hate that because other people have set that standard. And I've been in here for a long time. Yeah. I've seen, bro, I've seen shit. Like... If you know the era I came out um, of. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, like I'm a baby my... in that regard. But it is just so Bro. sad that it is so prevalent. Too many so people have let it be acceptable for real Exactly. Long. And that's made, that's not helped any victim because it just made victims too scared to speak up. And again, the fact that I spoke to so many people about speaking up about my story and all the people that said don't do it were men. Every single one. All the girls I spoke to went, yeah, if, you, if you're if you sure. And it isn't, obviously abusers aren't always men. And it isn't oh, no, yeah. men. And that. I hope goes without saying, but I do want to say at the very least, it isn't always men. But there is an undeniable truth that there it happens often. Yes. Um, because of the differences in how we're raised, it does happen more. Yeah, for me personally, that was just it's what happened thing. to me. But um, yeah. Oh god. Okay. Every time we go to end, it's just like. Oh! But um, yeah, there's yeah, another see. thing to say. <laughs> but um, that's why we could yeah. go on forever. We really could. We'll we'll, we'll try and get our thoughts together because I'd love to have Rihanna on here next time as well. Bless her. She's just feeling really and ill today. Yes, the girls on the gay. Uh, and just be really really funny um yes the funniest also yes i would like to also say that yeah i, I just hate i hate to say a sentence like that and come across as a man hater obviously we're talking to the the situations that are relevant to us and what we say isn't um, a blanket for 
everyone. I'll say it. I am expecting better out of a lot of men. Oh, yeah. Straight especially up. currently with um, both of our it. situations. <laughs> I was expecting men to do a lot better than they have. But I, I would love to see that. Please and thank you. <laughs> I used to be in the streaming community when a lot of these people small streamers. Oh, 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 if the shoe fits. Um, yes. Well, I, I, we're really, I'm really hoping because there are a lot of us. There are a lot of content creators that are the same way we do. And I think slowly but surely people are starting to gain confidence. Um, so hopefully this is something that grows and we can continue to give a safe space I, to people. Yeah, I feel like what, when I sort of first started talking to my friends, it felt like small waves. Yeah. Where I felt like I was really starting to affect people around me in a positive way. And then I felt like my stream was a really big wave. And I think this is another wave. And I think just more people are going to stand up for themselves. I, I really hope so. That. Like, do do I think that we're like the next bloody pioneers of a movement? No, but I'd like to think that eventually it will reach a point where it we're is a lot more. It. Yeah, I'd like to think we're a part of, of something and some kind of like, um, like, you know, bringing more attention to this kind of thing. Um, and at least yeah. start to make some kind of change would be i'd nice. even love that to be a main part of my platform now because i kind yeah. of one part of my platform is my ace experience i'd love this to be part of my platform i won't maybe ever shut up about talking about it no, i said yeah. i wouldn't talk about it more just kidding i can't stop talking about it it means so much to me to help other people oh i'm so proud of you i'm proud of you i was so because i was crying i haven't cried once thinking <laughs> about i thinking about these men we're gonna get the love we deserve we're oh, 1000 percent. and again 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 because i cannot reiterate enough everybody in chat please be kind to yourself and i really really hope like none of this has been triggering for people i so should put a trigger warning in the title i'm a fucking idiot um i meant to do it on mine too and i forgot completely fuck yeah i feel pretty bad now um but yeah please be kind to yourself and if anything in this stream has like resonated within you please do like look up resources please be like you know yes you know tell your friends reach out for help go to therapy talk to people please 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 talk, talk to people because again i was too scared to talk to people and if i had probably would have made the revelations that i made significantly earlier so yeah thank you so much everybody um i think i think that's a lot i think that's a lot thank you so much for hearing us yeah for yeah. two and a half hours fuck me um but yeah, not the last you'll hear us yapping about this. It's something we're very passionate about. And thank you all so much for being so, so fucking kind and so lovely. I know probably- Literally the biggest thank you. I know 80% of the people on here have no idea who the fuck I am, but like, <laughs> <laughs> all you've seen is my you? face. Maybe if, like, it, it, was, it was very early for Shelby. I was going to force her up on camera. Otherwise, that probably would have been much nicer <laughs> I was for your do it eyes. Anyway. But... I was like, 8 a.m., you got it, I'll be there. <laughs> so, yeah, and Shelby was going to get up for when I was going to do this at four. But um. I am from the Beta Squad video. Yeah, guys, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but um, love you all so much. Do you have any closing words? Uh, nope. <laughs> no, I'm, I can't like, think of I'm like, I think in two and a half hours, um, I've said a lot. But thank you for the if kindness. If I start talking, I'll talk for another hour. No, honestly. Yeah, um, thank you for everyone's support. That has been the the biggest thing. It has been incredible to see. Genuinely, it's I, I you, des you deserve it a million times over. It's just so nice to know that. And I think it's a good indicator for other people with the same experience, knowing that their experiences will be welcomed with, with positivity and kindness as well. This is a safe space here in Lexi's stream. <laughs> Always. Feel free to follow and stay. <laughs> <laughs> but not us ending not, not us ending our very nice serious stream with a promo it's like yeah come on Twitch TV. i'm not gonna not acknowledge there are a lot of people here watching yeah i was i've i've got it turned off so i don't actually know i'm kind of scared but i um, had to hide mine yeah i'm I've, I've just stopped shaking though oh no i'm still shaking a little bit but it's okay um but yes um Thank you so much for the kindness and, and and everything and 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 yeah just look after yourself and, and, please and. oh you just got raided Fuck, <laughs> <Max! And> <laughs> <laughs> Max GG's, what the fuck's that about then? Okay, now we have to restart the entire stream and make all of our points from the okay, beginning. From the, top. <laughs> from the top, make it drop. Well, the thing was, I was like, TLDR. I think, I was like, it feels like a little bit twisted to raid after doing a stream like this, but now that Max is raided, I'm like, oh, That's what fuck. I yeah, I was like, it feels was like, a bit I'm weird. just gonna go and just, I and just, like, just go everywhere on disappear, Twitch and go send some love. Disappear I don't know. into the, the silence. Maybe we'll find someone whose birthday night. it was or something. But Max, I hope you had a really lovely <laughs> stream. Fuck, we, we were just about to end. We, we done been yapping. Raid Soldier Boy. <laughs> Imagine we raid Soldier Boy. Like, actually, no. Although, to, to be fair, yeah. when I when I streamed with Average Harry, we we raided Tyler Oakley and taught him what Umphchella meant. <laughs> oh yeah, can we get can we get Shelby's Twitch in the the chat as well? You know, I I like to support Aww. a small streamer. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You think you for the raid when I raided him? What would I do without you? You know, I'm just, you know, uh, she's she's quite indie. I don't know if you've heard of her. She, she plays the, the block game every now and then. She can do <laughs> with the follows. Okay. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm, 
We can't raid Soldier Boy after doing a stream about a beast. No, we shouldn't raid a man. <laughs> we shouldn't raid a man. Imagine Soldier Boy trying to comprehend domestic abuse. That's a madness. Oh, should we? Now, I'm, now I don't know what to do. Do I? Do we? Do we? I don't know. <laughs> do we leave or do, like, do we just do, we... do a little chit chat that isn't about me? Like, we can talk about anything. Okay, wait, is Chaco any questions? <laughs> QA time! Q AMA! <laughs> oh, we could raid AMZ as well. That would be lovely. Okay, yeah. let's, 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 let's see if there's any good questions. Yeah, how was my day talking about this? Pineapple and pizza is a yes. Oh, I do also love your top. You look cozy. <laughs> you always look cozy. <laughs> okay, we'll send you guys over to, to Amy because Amy deserves all the love. I was actually an angel um, for both of us when both of us an were going through stuff. Um, but we'll be live soon again. We'll plan this Jackbox thing. Um, will this we'll be, be up as will this be up as a vod? Okay, yeah. Before Twitter takes us and runs with it, I'm probably going to keep the vod up. I think. Um, and in, I kept mine up for a day. And yeah, I, I wanted to remove it because I didn't want it to follow me everywhere I went. I am going to move forward, and this will not be the thing that I'm most known for. But, and also, I am bothered by the fact that I am often known for the d guy I dated at any point in time, literally, which is so time annoying time. anyway. But also, but, I saw a few people talk about like, are we allowed to um, like post clips onto Twitter of like things or whatever? Um, I don't think there's anything we said that shouldn't be. All I'll say is that I do think it's important for you to watch the whole thing because people yeah, are putting words contact, in Yeah, contact context is always important as well. Watch I guess we'll the see. Whole thing. I'll be prepared to say something if people go too far, but um besides that yeah. that's the, that's the difference i'm 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 always like <laughs> i said this <laughs> okay well i'll be live again soon could not tell you when but i'll send you guys over to amz much love thank you so much again everybody for being so fucking kind um i appreciate you all so yeah. much um thank you it was for really nice doing this giving us a safe the space. chat yes you guys yeah. <laughs> she'll be like no really mo only this time um send all of our love to yeah. amz amz deserves the entire fucking world and yes we love you all. Be kind to yourselves. We love you. Goodbye. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Ah. Oh, God. I can't see that. <laughs>